Hey guys, welcome back to the channel. This is a story about what if Naruto Daimyo Heritage is revealed council bashing. Before I start, please support for more amazing content and do consider subscribing to my channel and share this video with your friends. This is written by Aragon Potter and link in the description and support writer. Let's start the video. Chapter 1. Brothers Bond. Chapter 1. Reunion. Thinking. Jutsu. I do not own Naruto whatsoever or any of the characters the only character I own are my ox. It was a typical average day in Kanoha the sky was clear and the sun was shining and everyone in the village was busy and happy. Especially one particular person in the village, this person was Yuzumaki Naruto. The reason as to Naruto being so happy was because it was just yesterday that he had defeated his traitorous former sensei Mizuki. Who had tricked him into stealing the forbidden scroll for him and had become an official genin of Kanoha and was now one step closer at achieving his dream of becoming Hokage. Unfortunately not everyone in the village was happy that Kaiubi brat had finally become a genin. Some had even gone to the Hokage to try and convince the Hokage to remove him from the shinobi ranks, but the Hokage wouldn't budge and refused to remove Naruto as a shinobi of Kanoha since he had earned it. I can't believe that the Hokage is willing to let that monster become a shinobi and be trained to get stronger, said one civilian who had been watching Naruto heading to the Chiraku Raymond bar. I know, the Hokage has always been too soft, especially when it came to that demon, said another. We should have had him killed the moment that the Yandame had sealed the fox into him and ended its existence once and for all, since the fact that it's even alive now is an insult to everyone that day that day including the Yandame, said a third civilian. Then let's do it since I know a lot of guys would love to kill that wretched thing for good, said the first civilian. The AI in, I even get my brother and a few friends of his, since he always told me he love a chance to gut that demon and send him the hell where he belongs, said the third civilian. Fine then we met back in two hours, after which we hunt that hell spawn down and send him off to hell, said the second after which the three men left. Two hours later at the Kanoha main gate. At the Kanoha main gate three hooded figures could be seen walking into the village, one of the figures was fairly tall and was about six foot two and wore a long black hooded coat with the hood covering his head and his lower mouth could only be seen. He also wore black fingerless gloves and black shinobi pants and wore black boot and short sleeve shirt, he also carried a long o katana with a flame shaped like hilt, one, and a red sheath holding the sword on his left hand side. The second person was about 5 foot 3 and wore a long white hooded coat with green edges and the hood covering his head and his lower mouth could only be seen. He also wore black shinobi pants and brown boots and a green open robe top with brown armbands. He also had a green sash around his shoulders, held together by a round clip. The sash held his long sword sheath in place on his back and is tied to it at either end. His sword was about 1.4 meters long, with the exception of the guard, which is in the shape of a four-pointed bronze-colored star. A third person was about 5 foot 1 and wore a long grey hooded coat cover her head and her lower mouth could only be seen. Underneath the coat she wore a silver short kneed sleeveless kanoichi outfit. With a purple corset and red ribbon around it, she also wore white tabi and a pair of waraji, as well as a tight layer of fishnet that stretches from her neck down to her lower thighs underneath her outfit and wore fishnet armbands that went right up to her upper arms. She also had a long sword on her back, the handle hilt and the sheath were both pure white and the hilt was in a round circle shape. It's been a long time since I've been here, the village hasn't really changes all that much, thought the person in black as memories of his past in the village started to come back, some good and a lot bad. Sensei are you okay? Asked the girl wearing the grey coat since her sensei had stopped at the entrance and was just look out at the village. I'm fine Saya just feeling a bit of nostalgia, replied the hooded man. I never took you as a nostalgic person sensei, since you always said that you don't like remembering the past much, replied the boy in the white coat. I may not like remembering the past much Ketsu, but I do get nostalgic now again when I'm in familiar places like everyone else. Besides only a fool tries to ignore his past, since those who do not learn from the past are doomed to repeat it, replied the person in black. The man then went to the entrance booth and met Tachunin's. Are you visiting or returning, asked the Chunin. Returning, replied the man in black. And the children with you, asked the other Chunin. They are with me, they are my students, and they have citizenship for Fire Country, said the man in black, as he gave his students papers to the Chunin to prove they were citizens of Fire Country. And you are a shinobi here correct, asked a first chunin which the man nodded. May we have your shinobi id card to prove your identity, asked a first chunin again where the man simple handed at them once they gave back his student citizenship papers. When the two chunin looked at the man in black picture id card and the name and saw his face when he lift his hood a little to revealed his face, they went ghost white and quickly gave back id card. 
Forgive sir, ww we had nn no idea that why why you were returning to Kanoha, and w we ddd did not rr recognize you at first, since it and 12 years since you've been last here, said the first Chuna nervously. That is not a problem, replied the man in black calmly without any emotion. We shall inform the Hokage that you have arrived at once, spoke the second Chunin. That will not need it, since I will go to him myself, replied the man calmly at which both Chunin nodded. The man then turned to his students, you two go ahead and get some supplies, and what else we need, and I met you at the Hokage Tower in an hour, spoke the man with the same neutral-like tone he had spoke to with the Chunins. The two students both nodded and then shunshin it away, while the man then continued to walk down the street slowly, taking in the sights. Forty minutes later. Currently Naruto was now running for his life right, since he was being chased by a large mob of 50 civilian men, four chunins and a jonin. He had just finished celebrating his ninja status at Ichiraku Raymond Bar, where Tuchi and his daughter Am had treated him to a free meal. As he left the mob and ninjas saw him and went after him, Naruto had tried to hide, but the jonin that lead the mob was a former oinin and was able to find them. Also Naruto knew that if he tried to fight either the jonin or chunins would beat him up and kill him along with the mob, or the council will try and have him executed on bogus charges and for simply defending himself. It was as he was running down the street he took a quick turn right into an alley, hoping to escape from the mob, but unfortunately when he did he found it to be a dead end. Before he could even try and turn back he found the entrance into the alley being blocked by the mob. Nowhere to run now demon sneered the jonin. The time to finally finish what the yandame started and end you once and for all and avenge everyone you killed, said on of the chunins. Please don't, I didn't do any of that, I'm not the Kaiubi, pleaded Naruto frighteningly as he had back to the corner of the alley. Save you pleads for someone else monster at time to die, shouted a civilian man, after which the mob charged forward and start to beat, kick stab and hit Naruto. This continued for several minutes until a voice suddenly shouted Fktong. Kamiarashi, wind style. Godly wind from the mountain, in which a vortex of wind hit the mob and blew them away from Naruto and out of the alley. Quickly enough the mob gathered themselves together saw a tall man wearing black hooded coat with a hood covering his head, where the mob could only see his lower mouth. He also wore black fingerless gloves and black shinobi pants and wore black boot and short sleeve shirt, he also carried a long okatana with a flame shaped like hilt and a red sheath holding the sword on his left hand side. Who the hell are you shouted one of the chunin. Who am I is of no concern to you, but I do want to know as to why over 50 grown men are attacking an innocent young boy, responded the black clad man without any emotion. That is no boy that's a demon in disguise who killed hundred of out friends and loved ones, roared a civilian. After which for a few minutes the man said nothing and continued to look at the mob until he suddenly muttered a single word. Bakas. What did you just call us, you bastard cried a chunin. I do not like to repeat myself so I will not, especially to ignorant fools such as yourselves. Clearly you lack the mental capacity to be able to tell the difference between a young boy and a demon. I have fought several different demons and I know that no demon who ever allow itself to be attacked and beaten by weaklings like yourselves, replied the man. You bastard, cried another Chunin as he charged forward with his kunai, as he did the man stood still and did not even move an inch. Just as the Chunin was about to stab him with his kunai the man quickly sidestepped the attack and then grabbed the Chunin wrist. He then used his other hand to push in the Chunin elbow inward and in one quick motion, he snapped the Chunin arm in two. The Chunin screamed in pain, after which the man the swung the Chunin around and slammed the Chunin into the wall on his right hand side, knocking the Chunin out and causing a large dent in the wall with several spider cracks around it. You'll pay for that, cried another Chunin as he and two others appeared in midair behind him and were about to stab him. But before they could he disappeared and appeared in midair in front of them doing a spinning kick in which he then hit the Chunin furthest to left. Causing him to collide with the other two where they all slammed into the wall and knocked out together. After which the man gracefully landed back on the ground. As I said, Bacchus. Huh. So you have some skills, I see, and from what I have can see you are quite skilled at tojutsu, judging by the way you handle my friends, there you are at jonin level, which is the same level as me, spoke the jonin as he carefully observed the man in black. It seems the Kanohan ninjas have become quite arrogant since I was last here, spoke the man neutrally which caused the jonin to frown. And how am I arrogant since all I stated was that we were at the same level, and that can't be called arrogant, replied the jonin. The fact that you consider yourself to be on the same level as myself as being arrogant itself, replied the man neutrally again which caused the jonin to frown further. Ha. Huh. If anyone here is arrogant it is you and I think I have to humble you a bit and teach you never to underestimate a jonin of Kanoha, spoke the jonin as he took out his kunai. He then got into a stance and got ready to attack the man in black, who was remaining perfectly still as he was when the chunins attacked. Just as when the jonin was about to attack the man in black, the man disappeared within a blink of an eye. 
Before the Jonin could even fully realize that the man was gone, he suddenly felt an enormous pain coming from his stomach. When he looked down he saw the man kneeling down and elbowing him in the stomach. Impossible. How could he move that fast? Thought the Jonin before he keeled over and passed out from the sheer pain of the man's hit. As I said, arrogant muttered the man. When the 50 civilian members of the mob saw the Jonins being defeated so easily and effortlessly by the black hooded stranger, they started to get scared. Many were already starting to think about running away, until one of the members suddenly spoke up. Come on, he just one man he can't beat us all, cried a member of the man as he charged forward with his knife, after which the rest of the mob charged forward as well. As the lead civilian charged forward with his knife and was about to stab the black clad man he in the stomach. The black clad man caught the civilian wrist just before the knife could penetrate him, after which the man then twisted the civilian man arm with such force, he broke the civilian man arm. The black clad man then lifted the civilian man arm upward, which then caused the civilian man arm to snap, causing the man to scream out in pain and collapse on the ground. After which the black clad stranger went and engaged the rest of the mob. Bodhi Yauchub and Type and Tony Jaw Breaking Bones Revenge of the Warrior Tom Yum Goon, her Type and Warrior King Bone Breaking, to see what fight scene was like. After the fight it ended every single member of the mob was on the ground groining and howling in pain. Since every single one of them had broken a bone whether it was an arm or a leg or even both. The black clad man had beaten them all effortlessly within just two minutes. First filth, spat the black clad man as he looked down at the groining men, as they held their broken limbs with a disgusted look on his face. Since he despised people like them who attacked and beat innocent children who are unable to defend themselves. When he fought the men he had held back enormously, since he could have killed all of them within seconds, but decided not to and to just teach them a severe lesson about attacking children. This had been an enormous amount of self-control from the man since when he was walking in the middle of the street and saw the mob chasing the boy and the corner him in the alley and attack him. The black man had been sorely tempted to butcher all of them, but believed to do so would be more trouble than it was worth. The black clad man then quickly disappeared and reappeared next to Naruto and turned him over to see how badly hurt he was. When he turned Naruto round, who was unconscious due to the beating and was in a huddle position, and saw his face, a shocked look came across the man's face. Naruto but how I thought he was dead Saratobi even showed me his body, so why did he lie to me, though the man in confusion until he looked at Naruto whisker birthmarks. After which he then opened up Naruto orange jacket and lifted up his shirt and channeled some chakra onto Naruto's stomach. When he did Naruto's seal appeared over his stomach and confirmed the black clad man worst fears, he then turned and looked up at the Hokage monument and glared coldly and the yondame face. Damn you. Damn you to hell, it wasn't enough for you to ruin my life, but to ruin his life as well by turning him into a jinch cricky, damn you, damn both you and Saratobi to hell, thought the man in black angrily. And as if answering to the black clad man angry thought, Saratobi here is an Aka the Sandame Hokage, Aka the Professor, Aka Shinobi no Kami, God of Shinobis, appeared. Along with 30 Anbu Black Ops operatives, where 20 of them stood behind him, and the remaining 10 stood around the rooftop surrounding the black clad man and Naruto. Both Saratobi and the Anbu Black Ops members had been watching the entire fight from a distance. They saw how easily the black clad stranger had handled the Jonin and the Chunin's members of the mob, as well as the civilian members of the mob. The Anbu had grown concerned when they saw him defeat the four Chunins and the Jonin like they were noting, but fresh Jenin. Saratobi had also grown especially concerned when he saw how the stranger had handled the civilian members of the mob in such a brutal and vicious way, especially since the fighting style the man used seemed very familiar to him. When the man had dealt with the mob and went to Naruto Saratobi decided to confront the man. Step away from Naruto and identify yourself, spoke Saratobi with an air of authority that only a leader of men would have. When Saratobi spoke the man said nothing and remained still for several moments before he then picked Naruto up and stood up carrying Naruto in his left arm. After which the man the slowing turned around to face Saratobi and the Anbu, although the man still hand his hood up so they could only see his mouth and the bottom part of his face. I told you to step away from Naruto, now place him on the ground immediately and identify yourself or we will be forced to attack you, spoke Saratobi angrily. Since he was angered at how the stranger blatantly ignored his order and picked Naruto up and refused to speak. For a few more minutes the man just stood there looking at Saratobi and the Anbu, soon enough Saratobi had enough and was about to speak again when the stranger suddenly spoke up in a calm but chilling cold voice. You lied to be Saratobi. What? Asked the confused Hokage, since he did not understand what the stranger was talking about or how he knew his name. The stranger just ignored his question and continued to speak in the same chillingly cold voice. You told me he was dead and yet here he is in this village alive and being attacked by your shinobis and your villagers. What are you talking about? Who are you? asked annoyed and angry Saratobi. 
have you forgotten me already Saratobi or have you simply become senile in your old age, replied the stranger which caused the Anbu to stiffen and get into a fighting stance, since the stranger had just insulted their leader. Who the devil are you? Answer me, spoke the Hokage forcefully since he was losing patience with the man. The man did not answer or move for several minutes until he finally lifted his right hand up and removed his hood so to reveal his face. The man was a young and attractive man who looked to be in his early twenties. He had long purple hair that reached down to his shoulder blades and it went down to his face where he had it parted on the right side and with one long piece falling over his left eye. He had a narrowing face and had bright blue eyes, too. When Siratobi saw the man's face he went pale white where a look of complete shock came across his face. Since he now knew who this person was even though the person's voice had changed and he had grown more as well as looked older, he still recognized the young man. As Siratobi looked at the young man in stunned disbelief, he could not help but mutter a single word. Jane. When the more senior members of the Anbu group saw the young man's face and heard Siratobi they could but subconsciously take a step back in fear. When the rookie and younger Anbu members saw the shock and stun look across the face of their hokage. As well as seeing the senior members of the Anbu group taking their step backs in fear of the person. They grew confused at who was this man that got the hokage and the senior Anbu so worried. So you do remember me, replied Jane, after which he then started to walk slowly towards Siratobi and the main Anbu group. When he got to them Jane walked right past Siratobi, who was still stunned at Jane appearing, and stopped when he was on Siratobi's left hand side. He then spoke to him without turning to the old Hokage, and spoke in the same chillingly calm and cold voice he had been speaking them with. I suggest you have the village council fully summoned in the next three hours, because both you and they have much to explain about lying to me and for what you have done to Naruto, spoke Jane. When Siratobi turned slightly to look at Jane he saw Jane giving him a cold look at the corner of his eye. When Siratobi locked eyes with Jane, he suddenly felt as if he had been stabbed by an invisible blade in the chest, and all the air in his lungs got caught in his throat as he looked into Jane's cold yet empty blue eyes, the sheer intensity of them nearly gave the old cage a heart attack. The Sandane couldn't help but feel disturbed and slightly imitated as he looked into Jane's eyes. After a few moments Jane turned away from Siratobi and was about to continue to walk forward until a young Anbu as suddenly spoke up. Hey. Don't you dare talk to the Hokage like that, said the young Anbu as he had he had stretched out want went to grab Jane's shoulder to stop him. No don't. Warned Siratobi, but it was too late since just before the Anbu hand could touch Jane's shoulder, Jane disappeared and reappeared within the blink of an eye holding the young Anbu in the middle of the air by his throat, with his one remaining free hand. As the young Anbu was being held in the air he struggled to breathe, since he could barely breathe with the vice-like grip that Jane had on his throat and was slowly being choked to death. Not to mention the intense cold glare that Jane was giving him had frozen the young Anbu in terror. If you know what good for you boy you will never try touch me like that again, said Jane coldly which the young Anbu could only nod slightly. After which Jane dropped him and on his rear and walked forward towards the Anbu group that were in his way. I suggest that you all move out of my way if you all know what is good for you, said Jane coldly. Like Siratobi the Anbu group couldn't help but feel disturbed and imitated of the intensity of Jane's cold empty eyes. They could practically feel the imitating presence that Jane was well known to have. It was made even worse when he started to leak out a small amount of killing intent. Even though it was small it was incredibly thick and potent, where it took all the willpower that the Anbu had no to wither under the killing intent. Soon enough the Anbu quickly made a path for Jane to walk through. The wise choice, replied Jane emotionlessly as he walked through the group and down the street a bit and then shunched it away with the unconscious and beaten Naruto still in his left arm. Off woe the whole cough was the cough a start cough asked the young Anbu who was still holding his throat in pain. That bastard as you called him is a catchy Jane, or as we would know him best in the Anbu division as Janai Raryu, the bloody red dragon, spoke a Anbu captain. DT that was him? Asked a young Anbu as he went pale white with fear, since Janai Raryu was a name well known to all Anbu. Due to the number of enemies he butchered during the Third Great Shinobi World War. Yes, but there is one other name that he is better known as and is more famous as, said another Anbu captain. Which is? Asked the young Anbu although dreading the answer. Hino Hino Hitakiri Batmsai, Kanoha's sword drawing manslayer, 3, spoke the Anbu. When the young Anbu heard this he nearly shitted himself at realizing how close he came to being killed. Since Hitakiri Batmsai was a name that was nearly as feared and revered as the Kanoha's yellow flash in other countries, especially in Iowa. His power and fame was so great in Kanoha that only the likes of Kanoha no Shiroi Kiba, Kanoha's White Fang, Haddock Sakumo, the Densetsu no Sanon, the legendary Three Ninja, Shinobi no Kami, God of Shinobis, Saratobi Hiruzen and Kanoha no Kairoi Senken, Kanoha's Yellow Flash, Namakiz Minato, as well as a few select others, could surpass it in fame and reverence. 
the other younger Anbu were no better off than the one who had challenged Shane, since they had nearly attacked Shane, which they now knew would have resulted in their deaths or having every bone in their bodies broken in the very least. Okajama should we be worried that he may harm the boy, considering that he spoke a female Anbu, but before she could finish she was interrupted by Siratobi. No, Jane would never harm Naruto in a million years. But how can you be sure? Asked another Anbu. Because Jane would sooner cut off his own right arm than harm his own brother, or to be more precise his half-brother, spoke Siratobi with a sigh, since he knew what was going to happen very soon. The B-brother? Said a one of the Anbu who were all stunned. To which Siratobi just nodded. D then would TT that mean T that asked the same Anbu, only to be interrupted by Siratobi. Yes. Both Naruto and Shane are the sons of the Yandame Hokage Namakas Minato, replied Siratobi with another sigh, as the Anbu were completely stunned, since they now knew exactly what was going to happen in next few hours. And may the heavens have mercy on us all, for Shane certainly will not once he learns the truth, though Siratobi as he felt older than he had ever felt in his entire life, as he slowly walked back to the Hokage Tower, to prepare for the council meeting, as well as the bloodbath that was sure to follow. Chapter 2. Brothers Bond. Chapter 2. Looking back. Thinking memories. Jutsu. Summons talking. I do not own Naruto whatsoever or any of the characters the only character I own are my ox. After leaving the Hokage and the Anbu, Jane shunshined himself and Naruto to the hospital and quickly entered it carrying Naruto in his arms. Excuse me madam, but I need help, this boy has been attacked and needs medical attention immediately, spoke Jane to a nurse at lobby receptionist desk. Of course sir, let me have a look at him, spoke the nurse, but the moment that she saw that the boy that Jane was carrying was Naruto her face suddenly turned to anger and disgust. What the hell is that hell spawn doing here? He doesn't deserve any threatment after all the people he's killed. Throw him out to the street and let him die in the gutter where he belongs. He should be arg. Shouted the nurse until she was suddenly grabbed by Shane by the throat and lifted up and held in the air by Shane free hand. As the nurse was lifted in the air she struggled to breath due to Shane vice like on her throat and was petrified by pure terror as she looked into his cold murderous eyes that told her that she was a hair spreet away from having her neck snapped. Now I'm only going to ask this once, so I suggestion that you listen well fool because if you do not answer it, then there will be one more body in the Morgito you understand me, spoke Shane with a cold and dangerous voice. To which the nurse just nodded, since she could not speak, with Shane hand on her throat. But then, tell me where the nearest free room is so that I can treat this boy, since it is clear that the hospital's medical staff are made up entirely of imbeciles, said Shane, to which the nurse point to the hallway at Shane right. He got do down the hallway tt to room t22 which w will be beyond your right h hand side that room is free, croaked the nurse after which Jane then let her go, where she then landed on her rear. Jane then started to walk down to the hallway until he suddenly stopped and spoke to the women, without turning around to face her. If you do not wish to have any more injured people I suggest that you keep people out of that room. Also a word of advice, I suggest from now on you think carefully before you speak in front of someone, since if you do not you are liable to get yourself killed, especially when you speak to me, spoke Shane where he finished with a murderous tone and released a small burst of killing intent. And sent it directly at the nurse and knocked the foolish nurse out and caused her to start foaming from the mouth. When Shane entered the room he locked the room and then laid Naruto on the bed and started to examine Naruto's body for what kind of injuries he had. As he examined Naruto he found that he had four broken ribs, as well as a fractured leg and a broken arm, as well as several bruises and large cuts on his body. Also as he examined them Jane was shocked to see Naruto's body was littered in old scarsh, had several diagonal scars going across his chest and back. His arms looked like they had been burnt by something and on his back were several large scars, as if he had been tortured. When Jane had seen all this words could not begin to say the sheer amount of rage and fury that he was feeling right now. Although on the outside Jane seemed to be calm and emotionless, but on the inside an raging storm of fury and anger was raging inside of him. Those monster how dare they do this to him he's only a boy when I find the ones who have done this to him he swear on the blood of my ancestors they will know suffering and pain like no other man or woman has ever known I swear it. Thought Jane in a fury. After a minute or so Jane calmed himself down and continued to look over Naruto as he did he could not help but remember that first and last time he saw him. Flashback. Currently sitting alone on a bench near the double doors of the birthing room in a hidden location outside Kanoha village, Namaka's Minato was sitting there waiting for Buwako, the Sandame's wife, to call him into birthing room so that he could maintain the seal of the Kayubi and hold it back when Kashina was giving birth to his second son Naruto. As he waited he saw someone walking towards him, the person he saw was his eldest son Jane. 
Although he was only 10 Shane was tall for his age and was about 5 foot 5, he wore a black shirt and black shinobi's pants and wore iron guard fingerless gloves, he also wore a standard shinobi flak jacket, although instead of the standard green one that Kanoha shinobis usually wore Shane's one was black. He had long purple hair that reached down to his shoulder and it went down to his face, where he had it parted on the right side and with one long piece falling over his left eye. Jane also carried his black bladed sword that had a flame shaped hilt, which he handmade himself on his left hand side. Jane had only recently became a Jonin, since he had only just retired from the Anbu division, which he joined when he was only eight, making him both the youngest person to become an Anbu operative and a Jonin in Kanoha's history. When Jane reached Minato, he just walked past him without so much as a word to him and went to stand against the wall in front of Minato and folded his arms, lowered his head, and closed his eyes as he waited with Minato. Minato just signed in the past two years his and Jane relationship had not been good which was putting it mildly, since Jane hated Minato with a passion, not that Minato blamed him for hating him, since he hated himself for what he did. The reason for all this was because of what happened in a mission during the Third Great Shinobi World War Minato and his old teammate Akechi Gracia, Jane Mother, won. Their mission was to sneak behind Iwa lines when Kanoha forces drew out Iwa main forces in a pitch battle and then sneak into Iwa main supply base and destroy it. But the supply base destroy Iwa would have no choice but to fall further back to Tsuchi no Kuni, Earth Country, and out of Kusa no Kuni, Grass Country. The mission was a success and they were able to destroy the supply base, but it had been more heavily guarded than was believed during which Gracia had been badly wounded at the fight. Minato had been able hide both her and himself in a small cave in a large forest from the pursuing Iwa shinobis and set up a few traps to both protect them and warn them if anyone was near the cave. Minato then treated Gracia to the best of his abilities so that she should could at least survive long enough to get back to base when she could get proper medical treatment. For several hours they had waited to when the area was clear of enough Iwa shinobis to make a break back to Kanoha lines, since they knew that if they tried to break through with a forest full of Iwa ninjas, they would never make it out alive, especially with Gracia in her wounded condition. After a while he had gone out to scout around the area and see if the Iwa shinobis had gone by and if they could make a break back to Kanoha's lines. But as he was scouting around he saw something he never thought he would see, he saw the Yandane Tsuchikage traveling with just two Jonin guards and heading towards the battle between Kanoha and Iwa forces. At the time he did not want to miss an opportunity like that and so he perused after the Tsuchikage since he knew at the time if he killed the Tsuchikage, Iwa would have no choice but to surrender, hence ending the war, and with such a light guard, he believed he could do it and so he pursued after them. For 20 minutes he chased after the Tsuchikage and his guards, but unfortunately at some point he had lost them, after which he then headed back to Gracia. But when he got back he found the bodies of two Iwa shinobis and Gracia dead body, which had been mutilated with signs of being raped beforehand. It was when he saw this he realized that when he went after the Tsuchikage and his guards, some Iwa shinobis had attacked her, and although she clearly fought back, the remaining Iwa shinobi or shinobis had overwhelmed her and proceeded to rape and mutilate her, and then kill her before leaving. After he got back to Kanoha he explained what had happened to Jiraiya, Saratobi and the Kanoha elders. That was properly the worst day in Minato's life, since it was the first and only time that Jiraiya had ever looked disappointed and ashamed of Minato, since he had left his wounded teammate alone and unprotected. It got even worse when Shane burst the room, since he had accidentally overheard what had happened when he was coming to report to the Saratobi about his last mission. So when Shane heard what had happened to his mother and how Minato was responsible for his mother's death and wasn't going to be punished for abandoning his wounded teammate after a mission, which was a high crime in Kanoha, so that he could to chase after that Tsuchikage. It was never even confirmed sighted at the battle by any other Kanoha shinobis, it caused Shane to burst into the room and try and attack him, only to be held back by Jiraiya. It got even worse when Jane learned that what had happened to his mother would never be released to the public, too, since he, Minato, had been named as the Sandame successor and become the next Hokage. When Jane heard this he lost complete control of himself and broke out of Jureya hold and attacked him, Minato. During which the fight between them speared into the street, during the fight Jane also awakened his bloodline the BSK Mui, Berserker Fury, 3, which had thought to have been lost, since his mother never awakened it and he had shown no signs of having it either. When Minato had finally beaten Shane, he had tried to reconcile with Shane, but when he tried to hug him, Shane slapped him away. After which Shane then renounced him as his father and said he wanted nothing to do with again, since as far as Shane was concerned, he was the man who abandoned his mother to be raped and murdered. When Shane said that it had broken Minato's heart, Shane hadn't even let him come to Gracia funeral and pay his last respects. Shane also cut all contact with Kashina as well, even though she was his godmother. 
The reason why was because a few months after Gracia's death she married Minato, which Shane found it to be a betrayal by Kashina to his mother for marrying the man who abandoned her best friend. It was after Gracia's death did Shane become distant from most people and became cold and uncaring to everyone, except for a select few. During the war his fame rose to new heights, Jane became almost as infamous with Iwa and Kanoha's other enemies as Minato was. Where by the end of the war, Jane was known not only as Janai Raryu, Bloody Red Dragon, from when he was in Anbu. But also earned the new nickname Kanoha no Hitakiri Batausai, Kanoha's sword drawing manslayer, due to the sheer numbers of Iwa shinobis he killed as revenge for his mother Gracia. When the war ended and Minato was about to become Hokage Jane immediately retired from the Anbu right before he would have become the youngest Anbu captain ever at age 10. Most did not know why he did it, since the fight between Minato and Jane was kept quiet, although the few that knew about falling out between Minato and Jane knew that Jane did not want to serve directly under Minato. Before that, both Minato and Kashina had tired many times to try and make peace with Jane, but each time he just shunned them away, Jane had even became disgusted the people of Kanoha at how they would praise Minato all the time, since he found it an insult to his mother memory as they praised the man responsible for his her death. It was not until when Minato and Kashina sent word to Jane that she was pregnant with Naruto did things show signs of some improvement since Jane was actually willing to speak to them even for a few minutes. Jane would even come by time from time to see how Kashina was doing and if she needed anything when Minato was away on missions. But even despite this improvement the tension between them was still thick and Jane would only speak to Minato when he had to. For the next few minutes there was nothing but silence between the two of them, soon enough, though Bawako called Minato in as they were ready to begin the birthing, Jane was allowed to enter as well due to being family and having clearance as well. For the next hour or so Jane is standing next to Kashina hold her hand as a sign of support as she gave birth to Naruto, as Kashina was screaming, Minato grew concerned and panicked a little over the pain his wife was suffering. At this Bawako commented how he was the Yandame Hokage and shouldn't panic along with stating that this was why women have babies and men don't as they can't handle pain. This comment of course brought a ghost of a smile to Jane lips, but the smile quickly ended when Kashina started screaming again and nearly broke his hand by squeezing it too tightly, soon enough, though Bawako cried out that she could see the head and that Kashina was nearly there. At the same time Minato was struggling to hold the Kayubi in its seal, after one final push the sound of a crying baby that had just been born was heard in the room and Bawako was ordering the Anbu assistant Taji to get hot water. Soon after Bawako was holding a crying baby Naruto with whisker birthmarks on his face, no doubt some kind of result of being the child of the Jirchuriki of the Kayubi, congratulations it's a healthy baby boy Sei said. At this sight but Minato and Kashina cried tears of joy, even Jane smiled at the sight of he new baby brother. This was something that made both Minato and Kashina smile, since this was the first time that either of them had seen Jane smile since before his mother's death. Isn't he beautiful Minato-kun? Asked Kashina to which Minato only nodded and smiled down on his newly born son and then kissed Kashina on the head. After which Minato then had a serious look on his face, okay Kashina, I know you existed from the birth, but we've got to get the Kayubi completely sealed, where he then quickly went over to the seal on Kashina belly. Ooh hey alright but first, Jane would you please hold Naruto for me said Kashina as she prepared herself for the sealing. Of course said Jane as he let go Kashina and went to Bawako and took Naruto from her. As Jane gently held on to Naruto as he started to settle down and stop crying, Jane could not help like the idea of being an older brother and looking out for Naruto, as he thought of this, Jane smiled down at his newborn brother. But a moment later, Jane shinobi senses kicked in as he sensed something, whereas he turned around slightly, he saw Bawako and Taji full dead and with a black hooded stranger wearing an orange mask with black wavy lines on it and a single eye hole on the right side on it. At the same time that Jane had turned around slightly, the black hooded stranger threw a kunai at him, eyeing for Tebak of his neck, Jane had tried to move, but the kunai came at him too fast for him to fully avoid, where it slashed the side of his neck casing blood to gush out of it and Jane to fall to the ground. As he fell, the black hooded stranger quickly took Naruto from him and held him in front of Minato and Kashina in a threatening manner. The Andame Hakage Minato back away from the Jinch Kriki, or your son dies at the ripe old age of one minute. When Minato saw the Huden stranger, he could not help but wonder who he was and how he broke through the protected barrier around the head out. It was as he was thinking of this that Kashina suddenly started to scream out in pain as the seal was weaking and the Kayubi was trying to get out. Back away from the Jirchuriki or don't you care if your son dies? Asked the hooded stranger as he threatened to killing the no-crying baby Naruto with a kunai in his hand. Now hold it, Jay just calm down. Spoke Minato frightened like as he feared for his just-born son life. You should take your own advice, Minato. I perfectly calm, spoke the hooded stranger, as threw Naruto into the air and was about to stab the falling baby Naruto with the kunai. 
But just as he was about to stab Naruto, there was a sudden yellow flash, and Naruto disappeared and reappeared with Naruto in his arms on the wall. You certainly live up to the yellow flash moniker, Hokage spoke the stranger when he saw Minato on the wall with the wailing Naruto. At the same time, Jane, who was still alive despite his wound, reappeared behind the hooded stranger with his black katana in hand and slashed at the hooded stranger, only to much of his shock and everyone else's in the room, the blade just passed right through him. At this stranger that disappeared and reappeared at the other end of the room and looked at Jane who was still bleeding baldly from the wound in the side of his neck and was panting heavily. So you're still alive. It's impressive that you're able to dodge the lethal blow of my kunai to the extent that you did in the time you had, and even more so, that you can move as fast as you can, while still bleeding like that. But then again I shouldn't be that surprised, you Akechis have a rather nasty habit of never going down easily and always have to make things difficult, remarked the hooded stranger. Who are you? Asked Jane angrily, as he held his sword up and at the same time fighting off the dizziness and keeping himself steady, as the loss of blood was making it hard for him to stay focused on his opponent. The hooded stranger did not answer Jane's question, but did ask them both something else. Tell me what will you both do now? Not getting what the hooded stranger meant at first Jane quickly looked at the corner of his eye at Minato and Naruto, it was then that Minato noticed the explosive notes that were now stuck to the bottom of cloth that Naruto was wrapped in. Seeing them as well Jane quickly pushed himself forward and ran to Naruto and Minato to try and save Naruto. At the same time Minato quickly swiped Naruto out of his cloth, just as the notes were about to explode, and when Jane arrived next to Minato and Naruto and took a hold of Naruto, at the moment that Minato used his hearing Kyaku no Jutsu, God Step technique, to transport Jane, Naruto and himself to his home. Jane quickly took the cloth off Naruto and threw it away, where he and the Yandane with Naruto quickly jumped out of the house, just as the notes exploded and blew the house up. Both Shane and Minato landed roughly on the ground near one another, while Minato still clung to the wailing Naruto. Quickly the Yandame looked down at his wailing son to see if he was hurt, thank god you're not hurt said Minato, before quickly turning to his elder son next to him, Shane Aryo. I'm finna grinted Shane as he pulled out a piece of wood that was stabbed in his arm from the explosion, how's Naruto? He asked with concern as he turned to Minato and Naruto, who was still crying. He's okay, replied Minato with relief as he was gold that both his sons were okay, after which he cringed slightly in pains as a piece of wood was stuck in his leg, which was no doubt because of the explosion. When Jane pulled the piece of wood out of his leg, Minato then spoke to him, he's after Kishina, he forced me to use my hearing Kyaku no Jutsu to separate us from him, as he knew you would go next to me when you saw Naruto was in danger, and I would transport us both away from him and Kishina. Yes I know replied Jane seriously. We gotta hurry then, said Minato as he transported Jane, Naruto and himself to the Hokage's underground shelter. Once there Minato quickly handed Jane, Naruto, who was still crying, Jane you watched and care for Naruto here, as you both be safe here I going to get Kishina. Jane just had nodded, even though he wanted to go with Minato and get the hotted stranger, he knew that in the state he was in, he would be no help to Minato and just be a hindrance to the Yandame when fighting against the hooded stranger. As soon as Minato left Jane quickly calmed the crying Naruto down and then placed him in the small bed in the shelter to sleep, after which Jane then went to the nearby press and got some cloths and things and started to treat his wounds with the limit healing jutsus he knew, after which he then took a blood pill, so to replace the blood that he had lost. As soon as he was finished tending to himself, Minato reappeared with Kishina in his arms. Kishina is she okay asked Jane as he went over to her and Minato. At this a dark look came over Minato, one that Jane had not seen other than on the battlefield against Iwa, no I was too late to stop him, he was able to extract the Kyubi from Kishina. At this Jane quickly turned to Kishina whose skin was pale white, sweating and panting heavily, upon seeing and hearing this Jane quickly knew what that meant, Kishina was going to die, there was no question, it was a miracle that she was even still alive, after the Kyubi was extracted from her. Minato then quickly laid Kishina next to the sleeping Naruto, where she quickly took a hold of her sleeping baby, knowing knowing that she did not have long left and wanted to be with and hold on to her son for as long as possible. A pained look came across both Minato's and Jane faces, where then then both tidied their fists in anger, knowing who was responsible for this happy day, turning into a night of pain, suffering and sorrow. Jane I want you to stay here with Kishina and Naruto and spoke Minato, but was interrupted by Jane, turning him with a cold anger look at him. The hell I am I not staying here while you go fighting the Kyubi and that man, I'm going out there and when I find him I will kill him myself, spoke Shane as even despite his anger towards Kishina. He still cared what happened to her and after what the hooded stanger had done to her and tried to do to Naruto, he wasn't going to rest until he held that man still beating hard in his hand and rammed it down his throat. 
Jane I don't have time to argue you, so for once listen to me and sighed the yandame, but before he could fence of the weakened Kashina spoke up. M min min of the let Jane G goy will be be finna you need him more out there than I and need him here. At this the Hokage's eyes softened and relented, fine then Jane I need you to go out to the village and warn them, and then lead the force to try and hold the Kyubi back, until Kanoha can fully mobilize its forces. At this Jane nodded and then shunshined, body flicker, away. Once Jane was gone Kashina spoke again, Minato thank you good luck. Minato then turned around and put on his long trench coat, I be back before you know it, he said before he disappeared in a yellow flash. Three hours later. Three hours after the Kaiubi was sighted a fierce battle was raging between the forces of Kanoha and the Kaiubi. The battle had started when the vanguard of 80 shinobis led by Jane engaged Kaiubi, they were able to delay the Kaiubi for about an hour before it reached Kanoha main defense line, which stood right in front of Kanoha. The Noha forces fought hard against the Kaiubi and held it back, but after two hours of fierce fighting, the Kanoha defense line was on the verge of collapsing. As the Anbu commander tried to reorganize the defense line, he suddenly heard a voice calling out to him. Wolf. What is going on? When the Anbu commander Wolf turned around he saw a badly wounded Jane coming towards him. His clothes were tattered and were covered in dried blood and was clutching his side, which was badly bandaged up and bleeding fresh blood. He had several cuts on his face, and his uniform was badly torn up where it showed more cuts, there was also several chakra burns on his skin, along with bruises as well. Jane you're alive. Where are the rest of your men? When we lost contact with you and the others we thought the Kaiubi had killed you all, spoke the Anbu commander. All the others are dead, I'm the only one left so what's the situation? Spoke Jane as he held his side since he was clearly in a lot of pain. The main line is about to collapse, we can't keep the Kaiubi back from Kanoha any longer. Where the Yandame shouldn't he be here, replied Jane. The Hokage has yet to appear at Ali sent word requesting him to the front line, but he sent word back saying that we are to hold the line for as long as possible, and that he was preparing for a jutsu to stop the Kaiubi. At this Jane frowned since he was unsure of what kind of jutsu would stop the Kaiubi, but if it was time he needed then it was time they would give him. Wolf. How long would you need to reform the main defense line? About 15 minutes but why? Because I going to give you those 15 minutes, replied Jane. Jane. You can't be serious, you're wounded enough as it is, besides there no way you can hold Kaiubi by yourself, you need a summons like the toads or some other large summons to do that, spoke the Anbu commander. Jane just ignored him and then began to prepare to use one of his signature jutsus that he had created. The jutsu was called Hirinkyaku no jutsu which Jane created to rival his father's Horatian no jutsu, flying thunder god technique. The Hirinkyaku no jutsu allowed Jane to travel great distances within seconds with a single step. The technique worked where he would gather chakra under his feet and release it when there was a certain amount under his feet and would then let it all go in a single burst. After which he would ride them the small shock blast to his desired locations, much like the gliding on air in a single step at astonishing speed. The technique could nearly rival Jane Father's Horatian no jutsu in speed and deadliness. Although the only flaws with it were that it put a great deal of stress on Jane's body and took very good control of chakra to do the technique correctly. After Jane had gathered enough chakra he disappeared in a gust of wind and a small shock blast, right in front of the Anbu commander. Knowing that he could not stop Jane the Anbu commander, decided to use whatever little time Jane could give them, and started to give out orders to his men and reform the defense line. As this was happening Jane suddenly appeared right on the snout of the Kaiubi, and before the Kaiubi could fully realize that Jane was on its nose, Jane slashed at the Kaiubi eyes, temporarily blinding the demon and halting its advance on Kanoha. When Jane slashed its eyes the Kaiubi howled and roared in pain and started to trash around, but soon enough the Kaiubi's healing powers quickly healed its eyes. But when the Kaiubi eyes were healed, Jane used his Hirinkyaku no Jutsu to disappear again and reappear on the Kaiubi's back. He then channeled his chakra into his sword which activated its special ability to generate black lightning around it, allowing it to cut or pierce almost anything. After which he then stabbed his sword into the Kaiubi's back, although the lightning charge sword stab did little to truly hurt the Kaiubi, it still caused it monetary pain, much like a wasp stinging a person, and kept the Kaiubi distracted. After stabbing the Kaiubi Shane used his Hirinkyaku no Jutsu to appear on another part of the Kaiubi's body and hit it with another attack. For the next 20 minutes this continued, where Jane would slash and attack all around Kaiubi's body with different jutsus and attacks, and would use his Hirinkyaku no jutsu to appear on different parts of its body after each attack. The reason for this method of attacking the Kaiubi was not meant to stop, wound or defeat the Kaiubi, but to distract it and give the defense forces time to reorganize. It also succeeded in annoying the Kaiubi as well, since although the attacks did little than sting him, it greatly irritated it at the fact that these stings were happening all over his body. 
not to mention the fact that he could not swat Jane away and kill him, since he was too small and fast to hit, like a wasp flying around a person and stinging him or her. But unfortunately after 20 minutes of doing this the effects of doing Herring Kyaku no Jutsu for so long in his wounded state started to take effect on Jane, where it was becoming more and more difficult to constantly use and maintain it. Eventually the Kaiubi got a luckily swing with one of its tails and hit Jane hard and sent him through Kanoha's main wall and through a house which collapsed on him. But thankfully Jane efforts were not in vain, since he had bought the Kanoha defense forces, vital time to reorganize their positions, and were able to hold the Kaiubi back for another 20 minutes. After which the Yandame arrived on top of Gamabunta and used the Shaikif Jin, dead demon consuming seal, and sealed the Kaiubi into the Naruto. After the battle Jane was found by several shinobis and had somehow survived being hit by the Kaiubi and having a house fall on top of him, along with the other injuries he suffered. But even though he had survived he was in a coma for about three months. Three months later. When Jane awoken he was greeted by Siratobi and Jureya, who had returned after hearing of the attack. Good afternoon Jane, I'm glad to see that you have awakened, spoke Siratobi in a grandfatherly manner. W were am I, groaned Jane as he felt stiff and very sore. You're in the hospital, you've been in a coma for three months Brad, answered Jureya, who was glad to see Jane alive and awake. Three months. Said Jane as he sat up, but suddenly fell back down on the bed due to the pain his body was in, what happened to the Kaiubi? Croaked Jane. The Kaiubi was defeated by Minato not long after you were hit by the Kaiubi and sent through the main wall, said Siratobi. How? Asked Jane. Your fath, spoke Siratobi, but quickly stopped when Jane gave him a look when he called Minato his father, and quickly rephrased what he was about to say. Minato, use the Shaikif Jin that he created to rip out the Kaiubi's soul and seal it away, answered Siratobi, after which he continued. Unfortunately due to the Jutsu, Minato had to give up his life and have the Shinigami, Death God, devour his soul to use the Jutsu to defeat the Kaiubi. Yes I'm aware of the jutsu and what price the user has to pay to use it, replied Jane emotionlessly, since on the few and short conversation he had with the Yandame, he mentioned the jutsu to Jane and what it did. Jane knew that the jutsu invoked the powers of the Shinigami. In which the Shinigami would use the user as a kind of avatar, where once the user grabs onto the opponent, the Shinigami would then pull out the opponent's soul and seal it into the user. After the sealing was completed the Shinigami would then consume the soul of both the user and the opponent, sentencing them both to an eternity of battle with one another in its stomach. When Jane realized this he remained silent, since he did not know how he should feel, since although he still hated the Yandame for being responsible for his mother's death. The man did give his life to protect and save others, something even Jane could not help but respect and admire. What of Kashina? Is she asked Jane neutrally. At this both Jureya and Siratobi faces saddened. Yes Jane she is we found her body in the Hokage's shelter, not long after the Kaiubi was defeated, spoke Siratobi sorrowfully. At this Jane lowered his head, not surprised as like all Jinch Kriki once the demon the house is extracted, they would die from the result of the painful extraction, it was just a miracle the Kashina survived it for as long as she did. A in Naruto? Asked Jane as fear began to clutch at his chest. At which the two men looked at each other but said nothing. What happened to my brother? Cried Jane angrily as he stood up despite the pain, since he wanted answers. Jane don't push yourself. Warned Jureya you were already badly wounded before you took on the Kaiubi by yourself, and you were at death's doorstep after they found you underneath that house, it's a miracle that you're even alive. I don't care, tell me what happened to Naruto or I swear on my mother's grave, I will tear this building down brick by brick until I find him. Cried Jane angrily. Jane Naruto is dead, said Siratobi without any emotion. What? Cried Jane as he didn't believe what he was hearing. Naruto is dead repleted Siratobi, we found Naruto with Kashina body, and he was alive and was put in a baby incubator by a nurse when he was brought to the hospital. During which the incubator failed due to a power outage as Kayubi attack had damaged some of the power lines and the nurse and doctors were too busy with the wounded to notice what had happened. But the sudden temperature dropped Naruto fragile organs were damaged and he got sick died the following week, said Siratobi, as he lowered his gaze so not to look Jane in the face. When Jane heard this he couldn't believe if his brother was dead the only family he had left in the world was dead. After hearing this Jane began to hyperventilate and then started to have a panic attack. Saratobi and Jureya quickly went over to Jane and after a few minutes they were able to calm Jane down where he then asked to see Naruto's body if it hadn't been buried yet. Saratobi and Jureya then brought Jane, who was on a wheelchair, to the morgue where Saratobi revealed the dead body of baby Naruto, 4, to Jane while Jureya stayed outside the morgue. After a minute or so of looking at the lifeless body of his dead baby brother, Jane looked away since he couldn't stand looking at him like that. Jane then pushed himself away and started to head back out the morgue, but before he could leave Saratobi called out to him. 
Shane. To which Shane stopped but did not turn around. I know this is not really the right time or place, but I thought you should know, based on the reports that I received from the Anbu commander and those that fought at the battle against the Kaiubi. Both I along with the Council of Elder Shinobis have decided that you will be given the rank of Jonin commander as a token of gratitude for your courage and valor in the battle against the Kaiubi. Since the defense line would have surely have fallen had you not delayed the Kaiubi. You are also be given the same travel rights and other privileges that both Tsunade and Jureya have, since I know you have many painful memories here. So I thought it might be best that you could leave for a while and grieve in your own way and sort yourself out. Thank you Saratobi I will take your offer, and once I have recovered and I will leave since I think it is best I leave the village for now. Also if you don't mind I would like to be alone right now, said Jane with turning to Saratobi. Of course. After which Shane left the morgue. For the next three months Shane stayed in the hospital so that he could recover and do his physiotherapy, due to the fact that he was recovering, he could not go to Naruto funeral, which Saratobi told him took place a few days after he went to see his BOTY5. During those three months Shane had no visitors other than the SANDAIME6. After he had fully healed, Shane gathered his belongs at his family home and took some scroll that the Yandame had in his home on ceiling and then left. And flashback. When Shane finished remembering the events that lead him to unknowingly leave Naruto alone in a village full of people that hated him, he could not help but feel the rising rage inside him grow more and more. As well as the growing urge telling him to go and find Suratobi and Jiraiya and rip both of the apart limb by limb with his bare hands. But he quickly calmed himself down and decided to focus on Naruto first and deal with Suratobi and the others later. After calming down Shane suddenly felt two familiar presences enter the room. Sensei. What's wrong I sensed a surge of your chakra as well as a small bit of your killing intent as we were traveling in the village and thought you were under attack, so we tracked you here. Spoke Saya as she revealed her face which showed that she was a young and attractive girl with white hair that reached down to her lower back and tied the lower parts into a ponytail so that it went down further. Her hair also fell down to her face where she had it parted on the left side and with one long piece falling over her right eye, she also had red eye and a sharp but well sculpted face, 7. I am fine Saya, I was just dealing with some trash that were attacking this boy, answered Shane. But why were they attacking him? Asked Ketsu who revealed his face which showed that he was a handsome young man with a shape sculpted face with long bright blue hair that he had tied into a ponytail and had bright blue EYES8. Because he is a jinch cricky, answered Shane shocking both students. BB but if he is a jinch cricky, then that would mean that he is the jinch cricky for the kickby no inko, since all the other bijks are have sealed into hosts among the other shinobi nations, spoke Ketsu. But I thought you said the Kaiubi was killed sensei when the Yandame sealed it within him with his Shaikif Jin, dead demon consuming seal, said Saya. That was what I believed as well, until I saw him with the whisker markings on his face and a Haki Nofkin Shaiki, a trigram seal, replied Jane neutrally. Do you know who he is sensei? Asked Saya. Yes his name is Naruto he is my younger brother. When Saya and Ketsu heard this they could not believe their ears. BB brother. But sensei you said that your brother died during the Kaiubi attack, spoke Ketsu in shock. That was what I was told and I believed, clearly I was lied to and tricked. Hey are you certain t that your brother sensei? Asked Saya who was also still in shock. I am. But why did they tell you that he was dead? Asked Ketsu. I am unsure as to why, but I do have a theory, but I will need to confirm it first, spoke Shane, after which he then turned to Ketsu. Ketsu I need you to heal Naruto since he was injured from the attack. Right sensei, said Ketsu after which he took out a bottle full of water and drew the water out of it and the water covered his hands. After which Ketsu then channeled his chakra into the water around his hands and put his water covered hand on Naruto's revealed stomach and said. Kiyumizu Jutsu, healing water technique. This was a technique that Ketsu had developed himself during his training with Shane. Ketsu used his high water affinity to cover his hands with water and use it as a catalyst by sending healing chakra into the water. After which Ketsu would then have the water spread around the person body and help accelerate a person naturally healing both internally and externally. The technique work on similar lines of the Shimsen Jutsu, mystical palm technique, but much faster and unlike that technique, Chiyumizu Jutsu could even heal old wounds and scars, leaving no trace of the on the person body. When Ketsu cried out the Jutsu the water on his hands started to glow white and spread all over Naruto body and seeping into his wounds, after a while Shane and Saya saw the wounds, both old and new, healing and disappearing. Fifteen minutes later Ketsu stopped healing and let out an exhausted sigh, since the techniques took a lot of chakra, focus and concentration, before turning around. He should be fine now sensei all he needs now is rest to recover his strength, spoke Ketsu. Good work Ketsu, spoke Shane after which he then went next to Naruto, had point his to front fingers on Naruto's forehead. 
Sensei what are you doing? Asked Saya. I going to use my Rinomoi no Jutsu, mind meld technique, to merge Naruto's and my mind two together, so that I can see his memories, and find out exactly what kind of life Naruto has had here, replied Shane. Rinomoi no Jutsu was a technique Shane had created back when he was in the Anbu division, when he was in it. Back then Shane had spent some time in the Anbu interrogation division, during his time there Shane had studied under Yamanaka and Oichi, the head of the Anbu interrogation division. He had gone to Anbu interrogation division so that he could learn how to interrogate enemy prisoners on the field correctly. During that time he witnessed Anoichi use the various different mind-manipulating techniques that the Yamanaka clan used. When studying under Anoichi, Jane learned the basic principle of the jutsus by watching him, where he was then able to create his own mind-manipulating technique based on their jutsus. As the name suggests the Rinomoi no jutsu allows Shane to merge his mind with a person so that he and a person could share information and memories with one another. It also made a useful interrogation tool, since the person with the strongest will could control what they shared. Hence if Shane mind meld with a person and his will was stronger, then he could see all that person memories without showing any of his or learn everything that person knows. But the drawback to this jutsu was if the other person had a stronger will than Shane, then they could make Shane show all his memories and learns all that he knows. Are you sure that wise sensei? Asked Ketsu. Yes, since it's the only way I will be able to know what he been through and what they been doing to him, replied Shane where he then did a few one-handed hand signs and then spoke out. Rinomoi no Jutsu. Naruto mind. Shane appeared in a large open hallway, at the end of the hallway he saw several doors marked memories, thought, subconscious and Kaiubi cage. Seeing the doors Shane went into the one he wanted the memories, after which when he entered he found himself in an empty room, but as soon as the door to the room closed the room began to change. This was normal, since this was how he would see Naruto's memories. First memory. Naruto was laying in his crib, no more than a few days after the Kaiubi attack. He was wide awake and was viewing his surrounding suddenly the door to the nursery, a penadrevuling a nurse that whom Jane recognized as a younger version of the same nurse he had met earlier, with a scalpel in her hand. She walked over to Naruto's crib and sneered, demonium going to enjoy this so very much, spoke the nurse as she held the scalpel in her hand. Time to de she brought the scalpel down about to drive it into Naruto's heart when the doors were slammed open as a man with white hair and a white dog mask, whom Jane recognized as Kakashi, and a man with spiked brown hair and a bear mask, whom Jane recognized as Tenzo, grabbed her arms. But as the scalpel fell from her hand it hit Naruto and pierced into his side. The nurse then began to yell, no. Let me go the demon has to die, he has to die. The woman was then struck in her left temple as she was dragged out of the room. Not even a minute later Rin, whom Jane recognized as Kakashi's now deceased team member, ran into the room her eyes widened as she yelled out to Kakashi and Tenzo, Kakashi, Tenzijit me some coagulants no we need to stop his bleeding fast. When Jane saw still he narrowed his eyes and swore when he saw that nurse again he would skin her alive slowly. Second memory. Naruto was sitting in a closet clutching a blanket to himself. He was no more than a year old and he was living in the dampest part of the orphanage of the basement. He had not been given any food in several days and was incredibly hungry. He coughed up a bit blood since he looked ill and was very pale and tried to find some warmth in the blanket that he had which had moth holes in it and it was so thin it might as well be paper. Naruto curled up in the corner of the room as he began to try and sleep, but as he did, tears could be seen falling from his eyes and he began to cry himself to sleep asking out to no one why he was treated like this and why was he alone. When Jane saw this, two single tears fall from his eyes, and he began to curse himself to the lowest pits of hell for not being there to protect his brother when he needed him. After regaining control of himself, Jane then swore that after he had dealt with Saratobi and the council, he would find the person in charge of the orphanage, and he would then rip out the person's spine with his bare hands. Third memory. Naruto was walking around town looking for work so that he could earn a little bit extra money to buy more food, since he only got the bare minimum amount from social welfare, which was nearly enough to go by, since he was overcharged for almost everything in the village by the stores. As he walked around he saw a sign on the window of a restaurant that said it looking for a wash boy to do dishes and in return would get a free meal. When Naruto saw this he slowly walked over into the restaurant and saw the head waiter setting up tables for customers. Excuse me? Asked Naruto timidly I here for the wash boy job that you are offering here. Of course now Duyo spoke the head waiter as he turned around, he then saw that he was talking to Naruto you. Get of here you demons come. Please. I didn't do anything, I'm just looking for some work and some food, pleaded Naruto as he backed away in fear. I wouldn't give you the scraps of my dog, now get out. Roared the waiter as he grabbed Naruto and threw him out onto the street. When Naruto picked himself up he saw one of the cooks throwing a bag full of scraps and spoiled food into the large bin next to the restaurant. 
Once the cook was gone, Naruto snuck over to the bin and opened the bag open and began to hungrily eat the scraps and spoil food, not caring that they would make him sick later on. Jane began to once again lose control of his emotions, and as he did he began to visualize all the different things that he would do to the people that had gone out of their way to be cruel to his brother. He made a mental note to burn that restaurant down with that head waiter in it. Third memory. Naruto laid in his hospital bed, bound by restraints, completely naked. A doctor looked over him with a sick expression as he examined the wounds on Naruto's body, it seems that the demon isn't healing him at the memento well, he picked up a set of sewing needles, this just means I can do more to him. He sat next to the blonde and shoved the cold needles into his flesh. Ugh. Naruto shouted in pain as he tried to squirm, only for the doctor to backhand him. Shut your mouth damn and glad I am healing your wounds you filthy monster. He continued to forcibly shove the needles into his sensitive flesh until one of the gaping wounds was sealed shut. The doctor grinned as he pulled out some more thread, one down ten to go. As Jane watched this he started clench his fist so tightly that his hand started to bleed that monster. He dares calls himself a doctor, when I find him there will not be enough of him left to be even identified. Fourth memory. Naruto was strapped to a table in the hospital needles digging into his flesh, connected to tubes filled with chemicals he had no knowledge about. The door was slammed open by a different doctor this time, who had a crazed grin on his face, I must say I never would have thought the demon could possibly be useful. But here you're reperfect for my studies and experimentation. He went to the tubes and squeezed one of the packs, this little demon is a nice little chemical I whipped up, it is an amazing steroid for chakra. However, I have yet to put it through any living trials, and I have no intention on using on another human being yet. So, I decided to use it on you he squeezed the bag, forcing the chemical to flow through the tube. As it entered Naruto's bloodstream, the veins and chakra network began to stretch and convulse, causing him immense pain, Og. Were it not for the many years on the battlefield, Jane would have vomited from the sight, but it still made him sick. As he watched this horror show he swore his hunt that doctor down and let him know what it felt like to be vivisected. Diff memory. Naruto was running for his life. It was October 10th, his birthday, and he was only four years old. Behind him was a mob of drunken civilians and a few tipsy shinobi. He turned down an alley and to run into a large man with a sake bottle in his mouth. He spilled the sake all over himself as he fell backwards. He looked to see Naruto and immediately made a grab for him, he yaoshed the moon, Gret Brackbuffer. Naruto was about to run out of the alley when the mob cornered him and forced him back in the alley. The large man grabbed Naruto and slammed him against the wall. The shinobi, who was partially buzzed, get the demon. He shattered his sake bottle and stabbed Naruto in the chest, while other members of the mob stabbed in the stomach, face, back, and anywhere else they could get a hit in. By the end of it, Naruto had puncture wounds all over his body, his face was so cut up, the flesh might as well be held on by a thread, the rest of his body looked like it had been put through a meat grinder. The last member of the mob poured a bottle of sake over him and pulled out a match, by vitamin brat. He dropped the mat and caught the blonde on fire. Only part of him was burning, but it still hurt like hell. Naruto screamed in pain as he rolled on the ground, trying to put out the fire. The mob just laughed as one of the men grabbed the singed blonde and tossed him into a small trash can before he threw all the broken bottles in with him. Jane garnished his teeth in rage, he could barely continue his anger, normally Jane was a calm and collect person and it would take a great deal to make him lose it. But now he wanted nothing more than to go and hunt down every one of these monsters and give them a first-hand experience as to why he was known as the Hitakiri, the Manslayer. Sixth Memory. Naruto was running from a mob who was screaming things like demon and hell spawn, he tried to run into a story only for more people to come out screaming insults at him. He turned around to see that the mob had completely surrounded him the one up front yelled, kill the demon in moments he had been swarmed by the dozens of people, they were beating and bludgeoning him as another member of the mob yelled out, hey have a few things we can try. He pulled out a several throwing knives and told a couple people to hold up the blonde. Naruto was hoisted off the ground as the men began to cackle like idiots, let him have it. The first knife was launched directly into Naruto's stomach, just barely missing anything vital Naruto screamed in pain as another member of the mob threw a bunch of kunai at him. He was then pinned to the ground as a woman walked up with a cat of nine tails, I am sure you are going to like this nine-tailed whip string him up. A bunch of people from the mob grabbed Naruto and held him in place, tearing off the back of his shirt. She grinned, take this crack the nine whip slashed against Naruto's flesh, leaving nine deep slashes in his back. His screams cut through the air as the mob began to laugh at his misfortune, crack the whip cut into his flesh again. The mob continued to do this until someone yelled out, hey, the Hokage and his Anbu are coming this way let's get out of here. The mob scattered and left Naruto to bleed in the street. Or Jane, he knew he hadn't even watched even half of what Naruto went through in the past 12 years, and yet he could barely watch any more of his brother's suffering. 
Damn you Namikas, damn you to the lowest pits of hell, thought Jane furiously. He was so angry right now, he would offer his very soul to the Shinigami himself, just so that he could find Namikas and beat himself for all of entirety, for what he put his brother through. Seventh memory. Naruto was walking down the street on his way Hama was about to turn an alley, ah, get away from me. Naruto looked back and saw a woman being dragged into an alley. He ran to the alley and saw the two men ripping off her clothes while simultaneously fondling her. Oh don't worry girl this is going to feel great. He grabbed her panties and was about to pull down his pants. Hey y'all leave her alone. He turned to see a blonde haired blue eyed kid run at them with a chair before they could figure out what had happened, Naruto had smashed them in the face with the chair. The two men quickly yelled, the demon is attacking Yusa and quickly ran down the alley. Naruto turned to the woman with a smile, hi there I don't think that they will Naruto was kicked in the face by the woman who screamed. Help, the demon is going to rape me. A bunch of people saw the woman's state of dress at the end of the alley and saw Naruto on the ground. Hey, get the demon now. Naruto tried to run, only for the woman to trip him and begin stomping on his knee. The mob began to beat him when the woman pulled up a trash can, take this demon. And smashed it over his head. Naruto remained conscious as the blood began to pour from the top of his head. Ungrateful whore, spat Jane as he showed how he was treated for saving the women from being raped, he wished he could somehow take part in these memories and snap the necks of each and every one, one of these pieces of scum, and throw their remains to the wolves. 8. Memory. Naruto was thrown into a pit as a bunch of civilians began to pour the water from their latrines and gasoline into it. One of the civilians began to laugh, oh, how do you like this burning in a pile of shit, a degrading way for a demon to die. He lit a match, so long. Naruto looked around and prayed he could find a way out when he saw a hole in the wall of the pie that ran towards it, just as the match hit the sewage and gas. Naruto crawled through the hole, but got stuck his entire lower body was set ablaze, Aig Naruto used what strength he had in his upper body and pulled himself through the rest of the way. He quickly began to roll around in the dirt and cried as he tried to put out the fire. The mob began to cheer about the demon's death and slowly began to leave. Naruto stayed in the hole, as his legs were so burned that he could barely use them properly. He curled himself into a corner and began to sing to himself, happy birthday to me happy be birthday to me. And they call him a demon, these pieces of filth would not know a real demon if they saw right in front of them, though Jane angrily. Ninth memory. Naruto's door was kicked open by two men wearing shinobi attire, well looky what we have here, a little demon all by himself he how about we have some fun. The man looked at Naruto as he pulled out a hammer, pin him down. Naruto tried to run, but the men were too fast. Naruto was thrown to the ground as the men pinned his arms down. The man with the hammer walked over to Naruto, and so the little demon wants to become a ninja let's see how he becomes one, after all his fingers have been destroyed. The man smashed the hammer down on Naruto's pinky finger. Ah, the man continued with the rest of his finger smashing the hammer down on each one until it broke into several pieces. Well, looks like he won't be taking up our career now will he? Naruto was whimpering as he tried to struggle, oh shut up. The man smashed the hammer into Naruto's jaw breaking it in three places and knocking him unconscious. Bastards. And they call dare call themselves meant they will pay for this in blood I swear it, when I find them I will gutted them like fish and strangle them with their own intestines, snarled Jane in his mind. Tenth memory. Naruto was sitting on the sidewalk in the middle of the night had not found anything to eat in the garbage cans and was extremely hungry as he had not eaten anything in weeks. Naruto sighed and looked up at the sky, which was starting to darken. He knew it was about to rain and decided it would be best if he headed towards the woods. He got up and was about to walk down the street. Why hello there he froze and turned around, expecting to see another mob instead seeing a lovely looking woman carrying an umbrella, what are you doing out here so late at night? Naruto shivered, fearing the woman, Anoi H have no PL place to go. The woman frowned, oh you poor thing. She leaned down and pinched his cheek, who wouldn't want to take in such a cutie. Naruto looked up at the woman with hope in his eyes, ah really? The woman smiled, of cursing fact, why don't you come home with me? I always wanted a son. Naruto smiled and nodded his head eagerly as he followed the woman down the streets. They walked past many buildings, heading deeper into town. Suddenly the woman stopped and turned to him, smiling softly, here, my home is this way. She walked down an alleyway, and Naruto eagerly followed, never once thinking of the possible dangers of following the woman. The woman suddenly stopped in the middle of the alleyway and smiled at him, well he read Izumi home. Naruto looked around the entire area was just one big pile of rubble and debris. He looked at her, but this is a Naruto froze as a malicious grin crawled up the woman's face as she pulled out a knife. This is my home demon. The one you destroyed while my newborn son was still inside. She sneered in disgust, I will make you suffer for taking my son from me demon. She charged at Naruto and buried the knife in his shoulder. Aghh. 
Naruto screamed in pain as he felt the knife tear through flesh, muscle, and bone, and fell over, blood dripping down his arm. The woman sneered in disgust and reached into her back, pulling out a piece of barbed wire coated in blood, how dare you scream in pain when my baby wasn't even allowed the chance to do so. She kicked Naruto in the face, making him fall onto his back. She walked up to him and unrolled the barbed wire, dangling it in front of his face, you see this demon. She rolled up her sleeve, revealing deep scar marks, this is the barbed wire I got tangled with when you attacked, keeping me from saving my child. She wrapped the wire around Naruto's throat and began to squeeze, cutting deep into Naruto's flesh, how ironic that the thing that kept me from saving my child will be your death. Ha 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 blitch. The woman stopped strangling Naruto as a kunai was buried in her throat. Naruto fell to the ground, bleeding out, the last thing he saw being a woman with purple hair, whom Jane recognized as one of Kashina's former students Yuzuki Yugao. That murder wrench how dare, she call herself a mother when she does that to an innocent child, raged Jane in his mind. If I had been there I would have crushed her skull with my bare hands and splattered it all over the wall. Eleventh memory. Naruto was sitting in his apartment alone hungry watching the other kids playing with their parents and the other brothers and sisters. He crawled into a nearby corner and curled into a bow whimpering as he tried to hold in his tears. Kachan to san where did you go he tightened the ball he was in and sobbed, I want my Kachan he want my two san where are you? Naruto sobbed into the night an orphan on his own at only six years old. When Jane saw this hundreds of emotions ran through him until it was too much for him and did something he had never done, not since the death of his mother broke down and cried and banging on the ground. It's all my fault it's all my fault if I hadn't left if I had stayed Edmund of the would have happened Eddie could have protected Himi, could have been there for him forgive me Naruto forgive me I failed you, cried Jane. After a few minutes of this Jane regained control of himself and lifted himself up and then began to watch the rest of Naruto's memories. He watched Naruto being tied to a practice pole with barbed wire around his wrists and ankles and was being covered in gasoline. He saw them light a match and throw it on him. The gasoline must have only been placed on certain parts of his body because the fire followed a line and burned his flesh. The fire made a bunch of cross shapes in his flesh. Not a moment later an Anbu came in and cut down the assailants. The Anbu carefully doused the fire on the screaming blonde and cut the barbed wire off. He watched several other beatings and attack on his brother, such as when Naruto was beaten near death, with five broken ribs, a fractured femur, and a kunai shoved into his lung and released the next day with any real medical care. Another one was when he was hung by his wrists and beaten with bats, both arms broken, every rib shattered, fractured scoreless next day again without any real medical care. The next one was when a group of Ichiha tied Naruto to a training post. He had 17 stab wounds from kunai, 20 from shuriken released next day again without any real medical care. The rest of the memories all followed similar lines which did not help Shane and his rising anger, which was about ready to erupt like a volcano. As he watches the memories, Jane noticed two blank spots in Naruto's memory and stopped the memories from continuing forward. At first Jane thought it was a gap made by Naruto's subconscious to blank out memories that were too emotional hard on Naruto to remember. But as he looked deeper into these blank spots, he noticed that they did not have the consistency of being a subconscious memory blocks, since they were too precise and exact, it was then that Jane realized that the memory blocks were man-made. These blocks had been made by someone or someones who were skilled enough in kenjutsu and had enough knowledge about the mind to seal off and block exact memories in Naruto. After realizing this Shane began to use his knowledge and skill on kenjutsu to open up these memories and find out who placed these blocks on Naruto. After few minutes Shane was finally able to open up the blocks, both had been tricky to open up and both styles seemed familiar, since every kenjutsu user and master has a certain style. But even though he had opened up these memories here it was only a temporary job since as soon as he was finished looking at these memories they would seal up again. The only way to fully get rid of these seals would be to go deeper into Naruto's mind and destroy them, and for that he needed Naruto to be awake and for him to trust him. After opening the memories Jane then began to watch the memories. Twelfth memory. Naruto was walking up the stairs of the Hokage Tower after he got out of the hospital. He was going to ask Jiji to see if he can give him some scrolls to train with, at the very least he can get a jutsu that show everyone at school that he wasn't useless. Naruto arrived at the office and was about to knock on the door when he heard someone talking. Saratobi, how many times do we have to tell you? You have to kill that wretched demon, it is a threat to our village, spoke a voice, whom Jane recognized the voice as that old hag you detain Kaharu. I concur, if that demon is allowed to grow stronger then our village is doomed, said the other voice, whom Jane clearly recognized as of that old fart Mitakado Himura. I will not have Naruto Kaledi have gone so far as to allow the villagers to beat him without persecution and not punish the few shinobi that attack him, but that's as far as I will go. 
since if I cried, I know it would just divide the village and weaken it, I will not kill him, even if he was the Kaiuba which he isn't, the risk of Kaiubi getting out is too damn high if he was killed. Besides I have faith that Minato's seal will keep it contained if Naruto is kept alive. I had originally hoped that the villagers and shinobis would regard the Naruto as a hero, and although the most of the senior shinobis treat Naruto neutrally, the younger shinobis and the villagers treat him like he was the Kaiubi. This is why I'm trying to make sure that Naruto is kept alive and trying to make sure he's loyal to the village, since if he trained right and learns how to use the Kaiubi's power, he will become an unstoppable force that would protect Konoha, just as Minato had wanted. That is too risky, killing him would be more efficient, there is too much of a chance that he will betray us and turn against us, spoke Kaharu. That's enough, my decision is final dismissed. After which the doors bust open and Saratobi and the other elders saw the shocked and betrayed look on Naruto's face. When Shane saw this he began to snarl like a raging tiger, it made him all the angrier when he saw the pained look in Naruto's eyes, at how his Jiji, grandfather, had been lying to him about why the villagers hated him and how he let them beat him. This betrayal was made all the worse since the Sandane was one of the few people that Naruto believed truly cared about him. Shane then watched with a look of unbridled fury as the Saratobi quickly grabbed Naruto and stopped him from running away. He then began to watch Saratobi place a tracking ceiling on the back of Naruto's neck so that he could keep track of where Naruto was. This especially made Shane angry since it was illegal for a ninja to place a tracking seal on another person who had broken no laws and do it without their consent, after it was done Saratobi sealed Naruto's memories of the whole event away. Saratobi you traitorous piece of filth you pay for what you done I swear I will make you and Jiraiya suffer for what you done to Naruto and me. Kanoha will drown in the blood of its own people for this, thought Shane furiously. After calming down a small bit Jane began to watch the second memory that had been sealed away. 30th Memory. Naruto was walking alone down the dark streets of Konoha in the late evening, since he had just come back from training in his secret training area away from everyone. As he walked down he was suddenly jumped by a group of four men, jumped him from behind, and dragged him into a dark alley. Naruto tried to fight back, and as he struggled he saw that two of his assailants were Hyuga due to their eyes, when Jane saw them he recognized their faces, since they were members of the Hyuga main branch family. As he continued to struggle Naruto the saw his other two assailants were two men with long blonde ponytails, when Jane saw them he also recognized their faces and realized that they were both members of the Amanaka clan, one of them was even a Noichi younger cousin Sho, while the other was Sho best friend. Eventually the four men were able to subdue Naruto, where two of the assailants held Naruto down, while the other two stood over him, one of the two was a Hyuga, whom Jane knew as Hori, while the other was Sho. Well, well, well if it isn't the demon brat just the person we've been looking for, sneered Sho. Let me go I didn't do anything to you, said Naruto as he struggled. Not yet you haven't but you will in a few years time, spoke Hori, thanks to that soft-hearted fool, the Hokage is allowing you to train in the academy and become a ninja, and once you become one, you will threaten our village, we are here to make sure you don't. What are you going to do to me asked Naruto as he continued to struggle against the two men. Normally we would kill you, but unfortunately that annoying healing ability of yours makes it hard to kill you, and even if we did, we would have the Hokage coming after us shaming both our clans, said Hori. But we can settle for making sure that you never become a ninja and making sure that you never threaten us again, said Sho, and he moved up to Naruto and started to drawing seals on Naruto's head. After Sho had done drawing the seals, Hori then went up and drew more seals on Naruto's chest, after they were done they activated them. Iarg! Screamed Naruto after which he then blacked out. When this memory ended he growled in anger he recognized the seals that both men used, both were highly illegal to use on people outside their clans. The one that Sho used was a mental seal that if used on full power, could very well destroy a person mind and leave them as a human vegetable. Jane guessed that Sho must have the seal at either a quarter or half strength, making it very hard for Naruto to focus or concentrate when learning, as well as understand things, making him look like a complete idiot. The seal was only meant to be used on criminals that had done serious crimes against the Yamanaka clan or traitors who had betrayed the clan, the technique itself was declared a forbidden jutsu by the clan and was only to be used on only the highest of crimes against the clan. The seal that Hori had used was a seal that was used on branch members back before the cage bird seal was created. The seal was designed to completely destroy a person control and prevent them from focusing and using the charka correctly. It was even used on captured enemies of the Hyuga clan during the Shinobi clan wars, where the Hyuga clan would put these seals on their prisoners and would keep them from escaping. But even if they did they wouldn't be able to use their chakra anyhow, thanks to the seal. The Hyuga clan later stopped using the seal on the branch members since the seal made them useless to protect the main branch and they stopped using it on prisoners when they joined Konoha. 
Jane guessed that like with Sho, Hori used the seal at quarter or half strength, so to nearly ruin Naruto's control over his chakra. Jane also guessed that the only reason neither men used their seals at full strength was because if they used them at full strength, Sarutobi would investigate and find the seals on Naruto's body and would learn of their involvement due to the seals. But if they used the seals at a half or quarter strength, then it would have been enough to almost ruin Naruto's chances at being a ninja. Sho also must have blocked Naruto's memory of this, so to make sure that he wouldn't mention this to Sarutobi. Jane then decided that once he gotten rid of those seals on Naruto's body and dealt with Saratobi and a few others, he would make sure to pay Hori, Sho and both their friends a visit. After that Jane watched the remainder of Naruto's memories and saw what other things happened to him, which didn't settle well with him at all. As he watched the memories he did see that there was at least a small group that actually treated Naruto as a normal boy and actually tried to help him. Jane saw that Tsum head of the Inuzuka clan, who was an old friend of both his mother and Naruto's mother Kishina, tried to help Naruto by giving him small odd jobs in the Inuzuka kennel and paying him with some money or with a hot meal. She even chased away several mobs that tried to attack him or were attacking him. For that Jane was deeply indebted to Tsum, he had known her when he was growing up and thought of her as a kind of aunt. She had even helped him get through his mother's death and had several good memories at the Inuzuka kennel, where he often played and helped take care of the of the dogs there, since he found it relaxing and helped him forget his troubles for a time. Jane also saw a local Raymond stand itch Raku Raymond had gone out of way to help Naruto by welcoming him in and treating him kindly. Even despite the business they lost for having the demon brat at their stand, they still welcomed him with open arms and even gave him free meals from time to time when he didn't have enough money. Jane also noticed that they were the main reason why he hadn't starved to death or died of malnutrition, since Jane noticed from the memories that they added a lot of vitamins to his ramen, allowing him to eat a somewhat healthy diet. For that Jane was forever grateful to them and planned to visit the family and thank them personally and pay them back for all their kindness. Jane also noted that the Aburam clan helped Naruto as well, since they knew what it was like to be thought as outcast for what was inside of them. He noted that several members of the Aburam clan helped save Naruto from several mob attacks, and they even helped Naruto out having him do deliveries of the different types of goods that the Aburam clan made with their bugs help. Or they would they pay him for the jobs he did so that he have a little extra money. Jane was thankful for that and was not surprised by their action, since the Aburam clan did not take things at face value and did not let their emotions rule them. He had a good strong relationship with the clan and held them in high regard and enjoyed speaking with them. This was because they always looked at the facts first and always took the logical approach in things, he only wished that the village had followed the Aburam clan example and used their heads instead of following their blind anger and bigotry. Jane also saw his mother old teammate and his godfather Kishin Tetsu helping Naruto out by giving Naruto odd jobs and discounts on ninja tools so that he could train. Jane was not surprised that Tetsu was among the few that treated Naruto like a person since he knew Tetsu was a good and honorable man. Tetsu had helped Jane a great deal after his mother death and was the one who taught him to make swords, hence he and Jane were quite close. Jane even saw that Naruto had a few friends in the heirs of the Nara and the Akamichi clans, who although did not help Naruto in any real way, they still treated him like a normal boy and did not tell their children to stay away from him, which was more that most families did. Jane even witnessed his friends Kaya Achiha, one of the last three Achihas in Konoha, and his sensei eldest daughter Hitomi Hayuga, both helping to protect Naruto several times from mobs of civilians and a few drunken or foolish chunins that had attacked him. After seeing this Jane felt deeply indebted to them, especially when they each helped to try and heal Naruto wounds that he suffered from the attacks. Jane also saw from the memories that a teacher named Zaruka who even though had lost his parent in the Kaiubi attack, had a close relationship with Naruto. Although Jane saw that Aruka had held hatred for Naruto for a time he had still treated Naruto like everyone else, but he eventually overcame that and saw Naruto for what he really was a lonely boy. When Jane saw this, it just proved to him that Aruka was a better and wiser person than most of the people in Konoha. Jane also witnessed the night when Naruto was tricked into stealing the Forbidden Scroll by a ninja named Mizuki and everything that happened that night. When he finished watching the memory Jane was proud of his brother for being able to master the Cage Bunshin no Jutsu, Shadow Clone Technique, and the Taj Cage Bunshin no Jutsu, Multiple Shadow Clone Technique, to such a level in such a short time. He also planned to personally thank Aruka for helping to save his brother and for everything else he did for him. Not to mention he planned to play Mizuki a visit and thank him as well. After finishing watching the Naruto memories Shane then began to plan what he was going to do next and how he was going to make Konoha pay for what they'd done to his brother. Outside the real world. As Shane was linked to Naruto's mind and watching his memories Saya and Ketsu watch over him and Naruto, since Shane was basically helpless when he was linked with Naruto's mind. 
after about 15 minutes Shane cancelled the Rinomoi no Jutsu and his and Naruto mine separated, 9. When Shane cancelled the Jutsu both Saya and Ketsu went over to see how he was, but when they went over to him they saw a dark cold and murderous look in his eyes, which made both students shiver in fear. Ketsu recognized this look, he had seen it once before, near around the first time he met his sensei. The last time he saw that look, over 500 Kiri ninjas died that day. Sensei are you okay? Did you see something wrong? Asked Ketsu. I'm fine and yes I did, replied Shane shortly, since he was not in the mood to talk after which he made a hand sign and made two shadow clones. After which he quickly began and ordered the first shadow clone of him to sneak into the Anbu file and archive room and return with what he wanted and return in two hours. Well he ordered the other to go to a sealed location he knew of and after which he then told the shadow clone what he wanted him to do. After which the clones nodded in understanding and left, Jane then told Ketsu and Saya to sneak into the hospital file room and find Naruto's medical files and make copies of them and then bring them to him. When they left, Jane then sat down and took out a few empty scrolls and a pen from his side pouch and began to write a letter. During the next two hours Jane continued to write several different letters to people he knew. He only stopped to write when he received two storage scrolls from Ketsu and Saya, both of which continued all of Naruto's medical files that they copied, which according to Ketsu, were all 10-inch thick and filled all the drawers of a large four-door metal cabinet. This news had not shocked Zane, since he had seen Naruto memories, hence he knew everything that Naruto went through. But this had shocked and horrified both Ketsu and Saya when they saw them, since they had read some of the files when they were making copies of them by use of a copying jutsu. After they had read some of the files both of the agreed to do whatever their sensei asked them to do, since both of them agreed that Kanoha needed to pay for what it had done to their sensei brother. Soon after Jane's clones arrived where the one had sent to the Anbu achieves and file room came in with two storage scrolls, while the second clone had one storage scroll in his hand, both clone then gave their scrolls to him before disappearing. When the clones dispelled he gained all the information that they learned when on their separate missions, when Jane gained this knowledge he frowned and even growled a little when he received the information. Half an hour later Jane finished writing he then took one of the storages scrolls that Ketsu and Saya gave him, as well as one of the storages scrolls that his shadow clone gave him and put them both in his pouch pack. He then took out another empty scroll and then drew a seal on the scroll, after which he placed his two forward fingers on the seal and did a few one-handed hand signs before crying out Kinenisu no Jutsu, memory transfer technique. The seal that Jane had drew was a memory storage seal that he created along with Kinenisu no Jutsu, memory transfer technique, which like with the Rinomoi no Jutsu, was created based on Jane knowledge and understand of the mind-manipulating techniques of Yamanaka clan. The Jutsu stored a copy of all the memories that Shane had seen about Naruto's life and placed it in the seal, he planned on giving the scroll with the seal to a certain person so that they could see firsthand what Kanoha had been doing to his brother. The seal worked where all the person would have to do was cut their finger and make it bleed a little and then place the finger on the seal so that they could see the memories stored in the seal. Jane also wrote instructions under the seal so that the person he was sending it to would know what to do, he then repeated the process with another scroll. After he finished rolling up the last scroll he was sending, Jane then lifted the left sleeve of his trench coat to relieve a dragon-shaped tattoo and the bit his thumb to make it bleed and spread the blood on the tattoo and slammed his hand of the ground and cried out. Kuchius no jutsu, summoning jutsu. When he did a puff of smoke appeared in the air, after the smoke cleared, several small lizard-like creatures with wings appeared in the air flapping their wings fast so to keep themselves in the air. These creatures were of Jane's dragon summons, but these were only young ones, hence they couldn't really fight, but could deliver messages for him very quickly. Each of these dragons were of different color, one was ruby red, another was emerald green, one was pitch black, while another was sapphire blue, the next was golden yellow, as well as another being silver gray and another bright white and others being of similar colors. What is it you wish of us Jane Sama? Asked a young sapphire blue dragon in a small and cute-like voice. Sarek. I need you and your brothers and sisters to go and deliver these scroll to certain people and bring their replies to me as quickly as you can," said Jane to which the young dragon nodded. After giving the different scrolls to the young group of dragons and telling them each who to give the message and storage scrolls to, the group of dragons all disappeared in small puffs of smoke. After the young dragons disappeared, Jane told Saya and Ketsu to watch over Naruto while he sleeps and to make sure that no one but him comes into the room. He also told them to keep themselves hidden if Naruto woke up while he was away and that they were not to let him see them and were to follow him wherever he would go if he left the hospital. When Saya asked Jane where he was going Jane simply replied. I have some busy with the Hokage in the council that is long overdue and then left. The council room. 
After Jane's appearance in the village, Saratobi had his Anbu go and inform the clan's heads, Kaharu, Hamura, Danzo, the Anbu commander and the civilian council members of the council for an emergency council meeting. As Saratobi sat in the Hokage's chair alone in the council room, he could not help but let out a tired sigh, he had feared that this day might come. Saratobi had hoped by the time Jane returned to the village, the people of Kanoha would have forgotten their hate of the Kaiubi and accept Naruto, where he in turn would have come to love the village and its people and want to protect them. Saratobi had also thought that once Jane saw how happy Naruto was and how the people of Kanoha had accepted him, he would forget his anger at being tricked and forgive him and believe it was the right decision. But unfortunately Jane came back sooner than Saratobi thought he would and the villagers still hated and despised Naruto and believed he was the Kaiubi. When he first tricked Jane into believing that Naruto was dead and then gave him the right to travel wherever he wanted, he thought he was doing the right thing he even had the support of Danzo, Kaharu and Himura, who had all agreed to have Jane leave the village. Since Saratobi knew that if Shane stayed in the village and learned that Naruto was alive and had been turned into a chinch cricky and saw how the villagers and some shinobis treated him, Jane would have lashed out at them and stopped at nothing to protect Naruto. When Saratobi announced the news that the Kaiubi had been sealed into Naruto, he had believed that the villagers would have respected the Yandame last request and treated Naruto as a hero. Sadly that did not happen, the fear, hate, anger and loss that the Kaiubi had created had been too strong and the people saw Naruto as the Kaiubi himself instead of the boy he was. After seeing this he knew that he had to have Shane leave the village or else Kanoha could have been destroyed. He knew that if Shane stayed it would be revealed that Naruto was also Minato's son and Shane brother, hence placing him in danger. Since he was related to the Kanoha no Kairoi Senk, Kanoha's Yellow Flash, Kanoha no Shouten Gasai, Kanoha's Red Death, and Kanoha no Hitakiri Batmsai, Kanoha's Sword Drawing Manslayer, which would earn him countless enemies all around the Shinobi world. Not to mention the fact that if Jane stayed and he protected Naruto it would divide the village, since Jane had enormous influence in Kanoha, due to the fact he was the last of the Akechi clan, one of the mightiest shinobi clans that had lived. He was also the son of Namaka's Minato Kanoha no Kairoi Senk man the Yandame Hokage, and the son of Akechi Gracia, also known as Kanoha no Ku plus Nzuburito, Kanoha's Queen of Blades. He was the former student of Hayuga Hiyashi, the current clan head of the Hayuga clan, one of Kanoha's most prominent and influential clans, he had close ties with the Aburam clan and the Inuzuka clan, and was the godson of Kishin Tetsu, one of Kanoha's few great sword masters. Jane was also a hero in the Third Great Shinobi World War and in the Kaiubi attack, hence many shinobis and people in Kanoha look up to him and held him high regard. Jane also had many friends in the shinobis ranks, most now being Jonin or an Anbu, and who would side with him. Hence the village would have been deeply divided between two factions, the ones who hated Naruto for having the Kaiubi in him, and the ones who were on Jane's side, and if Kanoha's enemies saw the village divided, they would have attacked and destroyed Kanoha. There was also the chance that Jane would just take Naruto away and leave Kanoha which also could not be allowed. Since the shinobi elders as well as most of the council would never have allowed the Jinch Kriki of the most powerful of all the Bijks inside of him leave the village, where they would have had both Jane and Naruto hunted down like animals. Not to mention the fact that if the other shinobi nations learned of that, they may have lured Jane and Naruto to join their village and turn them both against Kanoha. Then Saratobi believed he had only one choice, which was to trick Jane into believing that Naruto was dead and have him leave the village. Saratobi had even had to argue with Jureya for hours before he got him to agree to his plan, since Jureya did not like it and because he did not agree with it, but eventually Saratobi had got him to agree. After Jane left, Saratobi had thought Jureya would have stayed to help keep an eye on Naruto or even help rise him, but sadly that did not happen, since not long after Jane's departure, Jureya left the village without so much as a word. When Jane had left Saratobi had believed that over time the people of Kanoha would forget their hate of Naruto and see that he was just a boy and see that he could one day become a great protector for them. He even believed that if Naruto stayed, he would grow up and bond with the people and come to love the village as much as his father did and be just as loyal to it. But sadly that plan did not work the people continued to see Naruto as the Kaiubi and was attacked by them. Saratobi had even forbidden the information of Naruto being the Jinch Kriki of the Kaiubi in the hopes that Naruto could bond with the younger generation, but that too failed when parents told their children to stay away, saying that he was trouble. Leaving Naruto further alone with no friends. But even despite that Saratobi believed he had gotten Naruto to still love the village and want to protect it and everyone in and try and prove them wrong about him being a demon. But now with Shane here that could change, since Naruto would then learn that he lied to him about having any family. This would then destroy the trust he had built with Naruto and combine the hardship and suffering that the villagers put him through, Naruto could turn against Kanoha. 
as Hirotobi thought this he could not help but think about how things could turn so terribly wrong with just one person's return. Soon after the members of Kanoha's council arrived one by one, after everyone was seated and the large double doors of the council room were closed and Siratobi spoke. Thank you all for coming so quickly for this emergency council meeting, I know you were all busy with your own affairs. What is it that is so important that you needed to have an emergency council meeting and to send out Anbu to inform us of it Siratobi? Asked Hamara. The reason why I called this meeting is that little over three hours ago Akechi Jane returned to the village. When Siratobi said this excited muttering broke out between the council members, although concerned looks appeared on Hamura and Kaharu faces, where they both turned and looked at Siratobi sharply who just nodded. When Danzo heard this he narrowed his one visible eye, since he knew how dangerous Shane was, and if he returned, it would ruin any chance he had of gaining control of his brother. Not only that, but he knew that Shane could very well bring about Kanoha's ruin in revenge for the acts of the villagers of Kanoha against his brother. This is excellent news, the Yaoundame's son has returned to us. Now that he is here perhaps he might want to take his father mantle, spoke one of the civilian members named Oroka Akogi. Who was a wealthy merchant and had used his influence to make sure that Naruto was kicked out and refused service in most stores and restaurants. And perhaps he will also avenge his father as well. Not to mention all other shinobis and people that died during the Kaiubi attack and kill it once and for all, spoke another member of the civilian council named Makura Chijin. Makura Chijin was from a power noble civilian family who were among the first non-shinobi families to join Kanoha when it was founded. His family held a great deal of wealth and influence in Kanoha and had often used his family wealth and influence to organize attacks on Naruto and have certain shinobis look the other way if they saw anything. At this Saratobi could only sigh fools, Jane would never do either of those things, he would sooner become a genin again than become Hokage since he doesn't want to take Minato's mantle. Not to mention he would sooner skin himself than hurt Naruto, and if they keep talking like that in front of him, then they are liable to find their heads mounted on his wall. I'm afraid that will not happen sink, spoke Siratobi before he was interrupted by a loud voice of a Chunin shouting. You can't go in there, the Hokage and the council are in the middle of a emergency meeting and your forbarg, shouted a Chunin before he screamed in pain, which was followed by a sickening sound of bone cracking. Stop. You're in Dara Arg shouted another Chunin who quickly screamed in pain as well, and loud crash was heard which sounded like as if a wall was crashing down. The crash was then followed by several more noises of bones breaking, screams of pain, large banging sounds as if something or someone was being smashed against something hard and load crashes, as if someone or something was sent crashing through another wall. What the hell is going on out there? cried Akamichi Choza and as if answering his question a Chunin was suddenly sent crashing through the large double doors of the council room. The council room doors were completely knocked off their hinges when the Chunin hit it, while Chunin himself was sent flying through the council room. Where he then slammed into the wall behind the council table and made a massive dent in the wall with many spiderweb cracks around it, after which he then fell onto the floor unconscious and bleeding from the head. When the Hokage and the council turned back to the now open doorway, they saw that the entire hallway that led to the council room was completely destroyed with holes, dents and cracks all along the ceiling, the walls and floor. They also saw the bodies of several dozen or more Chunins that had guarded the council room scattered all along the hallway unconscious. But that sight was not what had many of them shivering in fear slightly. The sight that had many of them shivering in fear slightly was the figure standing in the doorway in front of them cloaked in black, like an avatar of death, with a dark menacing and murderous aura surrounding him. That figure was a catchy Jane, whose head was lowered slightly and his hair hanging down covering his eyes. Ah should Jane is beset this mean this meeting is going to very, very troublesome, especially if this meeting is what I think it's about and if it is then we're going to be in for one hell of a shitstorm very soon, thought Nara Shikaku, since he knew the word troublesome, did not even come close to describing what he knew was going to happen next. After the council turned to look at Jane, Jane raised his head up so that the sand aim and the council could see his cold, merciless and murderous eyes now, they also now saw that his pupils had shrunk and his iris had grown, 10. When the Sandame, the shinobi elders, the Anbu commander and the clan head saw this, they began to get scared, since they immediately recognized the way his eyes were, since this was the only physical characteristic of a user of the BSK Mui, Berserker Fury, limit when they have it activated. When the civilian members looked into his eyes, they along with some of the clan heads, could not help but shudder slightly and feel imitated out of the sheer intensity of Jane's cold merciless, murderous eyes. Those eyes are the eyes of a true shinobi a true slayer of men, remarked Danzo in his mind as he looked into Jane's eyes, since although he hated Jane and believed him a danger to both himself and Kanoha. He did respect Jane's skill and power, which said a lot, since there were few people that Danzo ever respected in any way. For a minute or so everyone remained quiet in the council room the Hokage and the council member just continued to look at Jane in silence. 
This remained so, until Shane suddenly spoke up in a cold, calm yet hate-filled tone of voice. It's irritable need to talk. Chapter 3. Brothers Bond. Chapter 3. Retribution. Thinking flashback. Jutsu. Summons talking snarling. I do not own Naruto whatsoever or any of the characters the only character I own are my ox. Now as I stated in my other stories I know that my grammar and spelling can be a problem for some people I sorry. So please you don't need to keep reminding me of it as I'm doing the best I can with what I got. Last time on Brothers Bond. When the Hokage and the council turned back to the now open doorway, they saw that the entire hallway that led to the council room was completely destroyed with holes, dents and cracks all along the ceiling, the walls and floor. They also saw the bodies of several dozen or more Chunins that had guarded the council room scattered all along the hallway unconscious. But that sight was not what had many of them shivering in fear slightly. The sight that had many of them shivering in fear slightly was the figure standing in the doorway in front of them cloaked in black, like an avatar of death, with a dark menacing and murderous aura surrounding him. That figure was a catchy Jane, whose head was lowered slightly and his hair hanging down covering his eyes. Ah should Jane is beset this mean this meeting is going to very, very troublesome, especially if this meeting is what I think it's about and if it is then we're going to be in for one hell of a shitstorm very soon, thought Nara Shikaku, since he knew the word troublesome, did not even come close to describing what he knew was going to happen next. After the council turned to look at Jane, Jane raised his head up so that the sand aim and the council could see his cold, merciless and murderous eyes now, they also now saw that his pupils had shrunk and his iris had grown, 10. When the Sandame, the Shinobi elders, the Anbu commander and the clan head saw this, they began to get scared since they immediately recognized the way his eyes were, since this was the only physical characteristic of a user of the BSK Mui, Berserker Fury, limit when they have it activated. When the civilian members looked into his eyes, they along with some of the clan heads, could not help but shudder slightly and feel imitated out of the sheer intensity of Jane's cold merciless, murderous eyes. Those eyes those are the eyes of a true shinobi a true slayer of men, remarked Danzo in his mind as he looked into Jane's eyes, since although he hated Jane and believed him a danger to both himself and Kanoha. He did respect Jane's skill and power, which said a lot, since there were few people that Danzo ever respected in any way. For a minute or so everyone remained quiet in the council room the hokage and the council member just continued to look at Jane in silence. This remained so until Jane suddenly spoke up in a cold, calm yet hate-filled tone of voice. Siratobi we need to talk. In the council room. Jane slowly walked into the room with a neutral expression on his face, with the only thing that allowed them to even guess what he was feeling were his cold, icy, murderous eyes. Which seemed to stare right into everyone's very soul, the Hokage and the council members all watched him with worried and cautious looks, as they did not know what Jane would do next, the room was so quiet that his steps echoed loudly around the room. Eventually he came to a stop dead center in the room right in front of the council stand, one. It was when he stopped that a shout was suddenly heard coming from the hallway, there he is. When the council members looked down the hallway they saw about four dozen Chknins, Takibetsu Jnins, Jnins and Anbus were running towards them. Not even looking back four kunais suddenly appeared in Jane's right hand where he threw the four kunais at the four corners of the room and hit the corners dead center in each corner. After which he bit his finger and then knelt down on the floor where within the space of only three seconds drew a complex seal on the floor of the council room with his own blood and then did a quick few hand seals with just his one hand. Before he then slammed his hand onto the seal and said Fkenjutsu. Few in Baojo Hiki, sealing technique. Four quarter defense seal wall, after which the seals on the floor and the kunais in the corners of the room started to glow. Where a glowing white barrier appeared out of the corners of the room where the kunais were placed and covered the walls and the doorway. When the Afuchknins tried to get through the barrier at the doorway, they were just sent flying back by the barrier into a few other shinobis that were behind them. A few others tried to use the Shunshin no Jutsu, body flicker technique, but that too just sent them flying backwards. Seeing that they could not get through the barrier all the Kanoha shinobis could do was watch, listing and wait until the barrier came down. When the Hokage and the council members saw the barrier go up, they quickly realized that they were trapped inside the barrier and knew that they would not be able to get out until Jane brought it down. The catchy Z-H-A-N-E. What is the meaning of this? Shouted Kaharu angrily at Jane, to which just looked at her with a sharp and deadly look, which made the old Kanoichi shiver slightly. You are well aware of what this is about, as I would highly doubt that Saratobi could pull it off without you and your fellow advisor's knowledge of it, spoke Jane as a calm but cold voice. This of course caused worried looks to appear of the shinobi elders and confused ones on the civilian members and the clan heads. The catchy Shane, you will lower this barrier imminently, ordered Hamura, trying to use his superior rank as the advisor to the Hokage to try and get Shane to lower the barrier. Number. 
At this, Jane just turned and looked at Hameru with an emotionless look, and then spoke, it seems that the arrogance of this council's members has grown during my absence here, as only an arrogant fool would believe that he can control a situation which he cannot. At this Hamura narrowed his eyes and was about to retort before Jane spoke again to Siratobi this time. Did you really think that you could keep this from me forever, Siratobi? Did you honestly believe that I wouldn't eventually find out what you have done to him? Did you really think I would not make you pay for everything that you and this village have done to him? Asked Jane openly in a cold yet barely detectable angry voice. Jane please you have to understand what I did was probably the hardest decision I had to ever make. I was faced with an impossible of choice, where I chose the lesser of several evils. I honestly believed that given time the people would let go of their hate and treat him as he deserved, where when you returned you would see that it was for the best, pleaded Saratobi as he tried to get Jane to see reason. Is that so? From what I have seen, it seems that it was more to what was easier for you instead of the lesser of evils, replied Jane coldly. What I did was for the best for the village, and everyone in it Jane you need to un, said Saratobi, but was interrupted by Jane, who was starting to lose patience with Saratobi's excuses. What you did was for your own best interest Saratobi, as you could not afford the chance that I would take brother away from the abuse he suffered here. As well as keeping me from bringing down my wrath on those responsible for his abuse, replied Jane coldly yet still showing no emotion on his face. Brother. What brother? And what abuse, Jane Sama you are not making any sense, you have no brother, spoke one of the civilian council members Makura Chijin. So you have not told them yet of your lies to me and everyone else, spoke Jane openly. Jane you cannot speak of it to anyone, it is forbidden for anyone other than the Hokage, and we his advisors to know it, spoke Hamura trying to stop Jane from telling everyone the truth. I care little what any of you or Siratobi say is forbidden, especially when it concerns the well-being of my brother, replied Jane, where he gave the old man a cold look. Hokage Sama what are all talking about? Who is Jane Sama brother? Asked the Anbu commander as none of this was making any sense to him or the others. Before either the Hokage or the elders could respond to the Anbu commander question, Jane answered for them. My brother is Yuzumaki Naruto, better known to all of you as the Jinch Kriki of the Kikbi no Imko, Nine-Tailed Demon Fox, or as some of you may call him the Demon Brad, spoke Shane as he narrowed his eyes ever so slightly. Upon hearing this dozens of gasps erupted in the in the council room, from the council members, and from the Konoha shinobis outside the barrier, as they quickly realized that Naruto was also a son of the Yandame like Shane. The Demon Brad the son of the Yandame preposterous. I refuse to believe that hell spa arg shouted Aroka Akogi, civilian council member, in refusal. But before he could finish, he was hit in the throat by the back end of a kunai that was suddenly sent flying at him from Shane. Everyone else was of course surprised by this as no one had seen Shane take out the kunai, nor did they see the kunai until it hit Akogi, which caused the man to start coughing and spluttering as he tried to regain his breath. Fools should know when to hold their tongues, for if they do not they are liable to choke on the words that they speak, replied Jane coldly as he gave Akogi a cold yet intense look that told the man that the next one would not be a warning. Jane, I know that young Naruto looks like your father and has the same family name of Kashina and your brother's name. But he is not your real brother, the boy was orphaned with no name, and the Hokage gave him your brother's name and Kashina's family name after the Yandame sealed the Kikbi into him. The only reason he looks like your father is because of the sealing as the Yande mixed his chakra to make the seal on the boy and it altered his appearance to look like him. I thought the same thing when I first saw the boy until the Sandame explained it to the others and myself, spoke Tsum. As when she first saw Naruto when he was young, she and many others immediately saw the resemblance between him and their late Hokage and had believed what Jane believed until the Sandame told them the Yandame seal. So that is the story you feed them, a rather flimsily explanation, but consider how few know the workings of the Shaikif Jin, dead demon consuming seal, and the Shishmfkin, four symbols seal, and considering as well how everyone in the village trust you. I can see why they believed you, spoke Jane in a monotone-like voice as he looked coldly at the Sandame who was starting to get worried. Jane please this could do more harm than good if you tell them the truth pleaded Saratobi. You speak as if I care what happens this village, after everything that it has done to my family, replied Jane coldly. Okage sama what is Jane speaking about is the boy really Kashina's son? Accused Sue angrily as she had been a long-time friend to both Kashina and Jane's mother Gracia. Where she had tried to adopt Naruto more than once when she believed Naruto was Kashina's son, and even when she believed he wasn't she had tried to place Naruto under her clan protection and have him live in her clan's compound. But each time the Hokage refused her proposal stating that if Naruto stayed in her clan compound, it would be seen to other clans as favoritism as well as that she was trying to get Naruto to be loyal to her clan and use the Kikbi power inside Naruto to increase her clan's power in the village. 
Not to mention Jinch Crick deserved to show off the cage's might, hence he could not be loyal to any one clan that was not related to the current cage, as he must be loyal to the Hokage and the village first. It is indeed spoke Shane in a monotone voice, before the sanding could, as the story that the Siratobi told you was false, as the Shishmfkin, four symbols seal, that the Yandane used, would not affect the appearance of the of the host. Even if he used their own chakra and imprinted on the seal spoke Shane, exposing Saratobi lies to the rest of the council. Okajama, why on earth was this charade played on us? Why would you lie to us all spoke Hiashi angrily, as he was outraged that something like this was kept from both him and the rest of the council. Before Saratobi could explain Shane once again interrupted him, the ruse was not to fool you or the other members of the council, it was to fool me Hiashi sensei answered Shane. Upon seeing the confused looks on most people's faces, Jane turned to the Hokage, perhaps you should explain yourself to them Hokage-san. He spoke saying the last part coldly. At this the old Hokage sighed heavily and lowered his shoulders, as he knew he had no choice, as the rest of the council would not let this go, and Jane would not lower the barrier until he confused. The reason I hid Naruto true heritage from everyone was because if people knew that he was the son of the Yandame Hokage and of Kishina, Kanoha no Shout and Gasai, Kanoha's Red Death, too, and Jane. Then eventually the other villages as well as Minato's, Kishina's and Jane's enemies would learn of it, along with the fact that he holds the Kikbi and attack the village to kill him. That's is why I kept his heritage hidden and tricked Jane into leaving, as if he had stayed people would soon realize that Naruto was his brother, spoke Saratobi, hoping that his story would convince the Jane and the rest of the council. Unfortunately for Saratobi, Jane knew that Saratobi was still holding things back as he had been trained in detecting lies by Inoichi, who also could tell that the Sandame Hokage was holding something back by the movements in his body language and his face. That may be partly the reason why you lied to me and what you tell yourself, so that you can sleep with what you have allowed to happen. But you and I know that it is not the whole story, so I suggest that you tell us, spoke Jane. Jane I assure you that is the reason why I spoke the Sandame before Jane interrupted him again. I have had enough of your lies Saratobi, you will tell us the whole truth no. Spoke Shane coldly with some force and showing some angry on his face. As his emotionless mask was starting to crack as he was losing patience with the old frat's lies. I agree Hokage-sama as I can tell you're not being entirely truthful with us spoke Inoichi. Seeing that the most of the council did not fully believe his story, the Sandame knew he could not hide the whole truth and sighed again before speaking. Sigh the other reason why I hid the truth was because if I allowed Jane to stay here in the village and protect Naruto. It would divide the village as Jane would retaliate against the ones that attacked Naruto and saw him as the Kikbi, where many of you here along with others in the village would side with Jane. Dividing the village further, where the other villages would eventually see this and attack us starting another shinobi world war. There was also the chance that Jane would leave the village with Naruto, which was something that we could not have. This left me with no other choice but to trick Shane, said the old Hokage with a tried and sorrowful look, where he then looked over at Shane, who emotionless mask was starting to break and was showing a look of utter hate and fury on his face. The Hokage was right in his decision Shane, do not let your emotions and feelings cloud your judgment, spoke Kaharu, hoping to get Shane to see what Saratobi did was right for everyone. My judgment is not in the least bit clouded, for your reasoning still does not give you the right to lie to me and trick me into abandoning my brother to suffer 12 years of abuse and suffering at the hands of this village's people, spoke Jane in a calm voice which held barely contained rage in it. Jane you have to understand I did was best for the village and its people, for the needs of the many outweigh the needs of the few, spoke Saratobi. It's rather amusing that you say that Saratobi, for usually those few whose needs are swept away by the many, are usually the ones who can decide the fate of the many and what would one expect to happen. When a people go out of their way to make the life of the person with the power of the strongest bitch can them, miserable, stated Shane. I shall tell you, the person would act out like any other person and grow to hate said people and what to make the pay for their transgressions against him. But it seems that thanks to sheer willpower that my brother has, he has not turned into a hate-filled person. That kills anyone he meets, which is something that most people including myself would most likely turn into if they had gone through what he went through. Jane, I know that my reasons do not excuse for what I did, but still you of all must know that some evils must be done for the greater good of all, pleaded the old Hokage, unfortunately, though the Hokage words just further infuriated Jane. The feeble excuse of all leaders to justify themselves when they have done immoral acts commented Jane. Is that the excuse you told yourself when you went to sleep in your warm bed? Knowing that my brother was most likely sleeping alone, crying himself to sleep, cold and hungry most nights in a small, vermin-infested, freezing apartment. Is that also what you told yourself? When you allowed the villagers and the few shinobis to attack and beat an innocent boy without persecution or punishing them, spoke Shane shocking everyone in the room. 
especially Saratobi and the elders, because of how Jane knew this and the others being that the Sandane would actually do such a thing. Surprised I know this? Asked Jane openly, as he saw the shocked look on everyone's face. HH how do you know? Stuttered the shock hokage, confirming to everyone what he did. At this a cold smirk appeared on Jane, I know thanks to a special jutsu I created to allow me to see the members of people, meaning I know everything that has happened to my brother for the past 12 years. This of course shocked many as they did not expect Jane to have created a technique so similar to what the Yamanaka clan could too with mind techniques, but as surprised as the others were none were more surprised than Jane's old teacher Inoichi. Upon realizing this Saratobi knew that there was nothing about Naruto's life that he could keep hidden from Jane, since if he saw what he did to Naruto when he was younger despite the memory blocking seal he placed on Naruto. Then he no doubt knew everything else that happened to Naruto, which did not spell well for Saratobi or Konoha. Jane please there is much more to this that you do not understand, I had to do it for the good of Konoha said Saratobi. Tell me Saratobi would you have been so willing to allow all these things to happen your sons or grandson if it had been one of them to be turned into Thijinch Kriki for the Kikbi? Asked Jane coldly. At this Saratobi had no answer and just lowered his head in shame. I thought as much remarked Jane coldly. But I do care for Naruto greatly as I considered him like a grandson to me, spoke the Sandane weakly as he was starting to lose the well to argue on. Really, then you have a rather humorous way of showing it, but if this is the way that you treat your grandchildren, then I pity your grandson, spoke Jane coldly. But still tell me Saratobi, where was this determination for the greater good of Konoha when you had the chance to kill Orochimaru? How was it in the greater good of Konoha when you let him go? Even after you caught him in the act of experimenting on Konoha shinobis and civilians and using them as human guinea pigs in his twisted attempt to be immortal and to learn all of the world's jutsus. Tell me also how is it that you allowed the man responsible for the murder of 60 innocent infants, be the good for Konoha? Asked Jane shocking everyone and stunning Saratobi. That's absurd, the Hokage would never do such a thing. Spoke another civilian member named Katsai Ori Genshin, who was politician that had gotten into his position through friends on the council, where there would be little he wouldn't do to keep his position. Then I shall prove it to you spoke Jane as he took out a scroll from his pouch and opened it up and spread his blood over the seal, where it started to glow, and an after image of younger Saratobi and Orochimaru appeared. The image you're about to see is of what happened in his laboratory at the night of Orochimaru crimes being discovered, some friends I made over my travels taught me this technique. As this seal gathers the chakra residue of people who have been in an area recently where it creates an after image made out of the other people's chakra residue and plays back the last events of what happened in the area it activated in. I sent a clone earlier to break into the seal laboratory, as I always found it strange at how Orochimaru escaped when Saratobi had cornered him. Normally the chakra residue would dissipate over time, but due to laboratory being sealed so soon after the event the chakra residue was preserved, allowing me to gather it and play back the events of that night to you all. Once Shane finished his explanation he had the seal fully activate and play the events, where everyone on the council saw the younger Sandame have Orochimaru, but lower his weapon and allowed him to escape. No one on the council or the shinobis outside the barrier could believe what they had just seen after the after images faded and Jane rolled up the scroll and put it away. Many of course refused to believe it, but when they saw the guilt and shame filled look on the old Hokage's face, they knew it was true. Saratobi you sentimental old fool, though Danzo and angry and disgusted at how much of a fool the Sandame had been to allow his sentimentality for his former student to escape. So tell me Sarchatobi, how can you explain the way that you allowed a man whose guilt was unquestionable to get away? asked Jane openly. The blood of every person he killed from that moment right up until now is on your hands because you lack the wiliness to kill him. But yet later on you allowed an innocent child to be beat abused and tortured by ignorant cowards because you yet again you lack the wiliness to do the right thing because it was harder. Jane I know I wronged both you and Naruto in ways I can never make up for and I truly sorry for it but please you have to understand I had no other choice, pleaded Sarchuobi. There were always other choices Saratobi, you just picked the easier one, you were too weak to choose the right ones, as they would have been too hard for you. No matter what pretexts you say that makes you believe what you did was right. They do not change the evil that you had a hand in, for the road to hell and paved with good intentions, replied Jane coldly. Saratobi of course could not help but wince at that remark, as part of him agreed with what Jane said, as no excuse, no matter how noble or right it may should excuses him of allowing an innocent boy to be persecuted for something he was not reasonable for. But even still Saratobi pushed that part away as he still believed he did what was right, if I had not hid Naruto identity the Iwa would have, spoke Saratobi only to be stopped by Jane. Iwa would have done nothing Lunoki is no fool, most of his village's shinobis were killed in the war with us and he would need all of them if he wanted Iwa to survive and not be destroyed by the other villages. 
as he would know full well that any that he would send to kill Naruto would have been sent back in pieces by me, stated Shane angrily. I can't force people to forget their angry and sorrow nor make them accept someone, I truly believed that the people would eventually forget their hate and angry at Naruto over time, and I could not protect Naruto all the time, said Siratobi. Then you should have let me take care of my brother instead of tricking me into abandoning him. You once told me when I was young that the people of Konoha were like a family and that the Hokage duty was to care and protect them all like they were his or her own. Yet why did you not protect Naruto, was he not a member of Konoha? Wasn't he deserving of protection? Spoke Shane angrily as his emotionless mask was on the verge of breaking now. At this Saratobi lowered his head in shame again as he remembered saying that to Shane and being reminded of how he failed Naruto in so many ways. You're not more than a hypocrite, Saratobi you speak of caring for each person in the village like they are family. Yet when it is in your own best interest you're just as likely as stab them in the back like the lowest missing nin. The only right decision you ever made about my brother was that you did not give him to Danzo, continued Shane where he looked at Danzo with a cold and hate-filled look in his eyes. Not to be intimated by Shane, Danzo locked eyes Shane, if the Hokage had heeded by wisdom and given me your brother to train. He would have become the greatest protector of Konoha, greater than his mother or the Shadame Hokage's wife Mido-sama, stated Danzo. More like a motionless puppet for you remarked Shane coldly, be grateful that he did not dance for if he had Kanoha would be burning right now to the ground and its streets would be filled with the blood of its people and Shinobis and Yawel dead, said Shane in a cold deadly tone. At this Danzo narrowed his eyes and the snapped his fingers, where four root shinobis that had hidden in the rafters of the council room appeared in the room where one came up behind Shane with his tanto at Shane neck while the other three surrounded Shane. At the same time two official Anbu agents appeared beside the Hokage to protect him, as they had not sensed the root shinobis and feared that Danzo was planning to assassinate the Hokage. It seems that Root has not been entirely disbanded after all, stated Shane rather calmly, who was not the least bit surprised or worried. Danzo what is the meaning of this? Root is supposed to be disbanded spoke the Sandame angrily as he looked at Danzo. And it is, these are former members who are my personal guards and since Shane has not only threatened my life but threatened Konoha. He has committed treason, and I'm well in my right to order my men to have him killed, stated Danzo, not even look at the Hokage. All the while keeping his eye on Shane, where he gave his men a nod to kill Shane before the Hokage or any of the other council members could stop him. Right when the root nin behind Shane was about to silt Shane's throat, Shane suddenly disappeared in a blink of an eye and reappeared just as quickly behind the root agent and grabbed him in a choke like hold. After which he twisted the root agent's neck with such force and speed that he ripped the man's head straight off, causing blood to splatter all over Shane's face. The root agent right in front of Shane charged at Shane with his tanto, seeing this Shane threw the root agent's head away and pushed aside his body and let the second root agent come at him. Just as the root agent was about to stab him, Shane quickly sidestepped the root agent and grabbed him by the neck with his one hand and stopped the root agent dead in his tracks. After which in a feat of impressive strength Shane then lifted the root agent into the air with his one hand and much to the horror of everyone around, he ripped the man's throat out with his bare hands, splattering more blood over his face and on his clothes. Shane then dropped the dead body of the root agent, where as soon as he did a tanto blade came out of his chest from a root agent that had snuck up behind him and stabbed him in the back. But just as the root agent thought he had killed him, Shane started to fade away, where the root agent muttered in surprise and confusion bunchin. But a spilt second Shane reappeared in front of the Ruta Gen. Nose and zm after image, after which he then did a quick knife hand strike right into the man neck and pulled out his blood covered hand, killing the man in just a few seconds. Shane then quickly spun around to avoid the back stab from a root agent who had tried to stab Shane in the back with his tanto. After which Shane then grabbed the man's face mask and kicked his legs from behind, causing him to fall backwards. Jane then smashed the root agent's head right onto the flood, spattering pieces of the man's head all over the room and onto several council members, much to their disgust. The fight lasted less than 10 seconds yet by the end of it all, much of the floor around Jane along with his face and several parts of his clothes were covered in the blood of the root agents. But what made many on the council and the shinobis in and out of the council room scared was when they looked into his cold, merciless and murderous blue eyes which were made all the more intense and frightening with his face still remaining blank, emotionless and covered in blood. When they looked at his face and eyes the shinobi members on the council along with the shinobis watching from outside the council room. Could not help but be reminded of Shane's bloody reputation during the war, while the civilian members on the council finally saw why exactly Shane was called a manslayer. The shinobi outside the council room were actually kind of glad that they had not got in, as many feared that they would have ended like the root agents, had they confronted Shane. 
Banzo himself could not believe what he had saw and was even slightly nervous, as Jane had basically slaughtered four of his best agents in less than 10 seconds and did it as if they were not more than mere genin. Brittle, quick and efficient as always Jane thought Hiashi, who was slight unnerved like many at the slight, although did well to hit it. Jane that enough this has gone too far spoke Siratobi angrily. As Hokage I must think better met of everyone in the village and I'm you he spoke before a suddenly an incredible killing intent was felt throughout the room and outside it. I have had enough of your lies and excuses old man, snarled out Jane as his emotionless mask had finally broke and his eyes were ablaze with untold fury and rage and he. Everyone was frozen from sheer terror of the killing intent for a moment or two, which was all that Jane needed. As within a blink of an eye he disappeared again and then reappeared just as quickly, holding the hokage against the wall behind the council table and lifting him up slightly by the neck with just his left hand. In his right Jane held his now drawn black bladed katana, where its tip was dangerously close to stabbing the old cage right between the eyes. At the same time that everyone saw this, they also saw the two anbu that had been beside the sand aim fall to the ground unconscious. As somehow in the moment or two that everyone had been too paralyzed to move due to the killing intent, Jane had speed across the room, knocked out the two Anbu and grabbed the Hokage and pinned him against the wall. Once Siratobi had overcome the killing intent and realized the situation he was in he tired to get out of it by replacing himself with something, but when he tired he found that his body could not move. It was then that he noticed seal markings spreading all over his body coming from Jane hand that held him by the neck. I wouldn't bother trying to move Siratobi, as you have no doubt guessed the seals that are now spreading across your body are preventing your body from move. It is a special sealing technique that I have developed that prevents the person I'm holding in my hand from moving any part of their body. So as long as I have you in my hand, you cannot move or summon your chakra to overpower it, spoke Jane. Jane stop this. Cried Tsumashi and the other shinobi members of the council could not move for fear of Jane killing the Hokage if they tried anything to stop him. Sum is right Jane, this won't help matters, nor will it change what has happened to your brother spoke Hiashi, as he tried to stop his former student from killing the Hokage. It may not, but I care little as he deserves to pay for what he has done not only to Naruto, but for what has done my mother spoke Jane angrily. As he glared angrily at the old Hokage who was struggling to breathe as Jane tightened his grip on his throat. What do you mean your mother Jane San? Asked Abiram Shaibi, as he too was concerned with what was happening right now and was looking for any way to calm the situation. Jane that is enough, you were forbidden to speak of it to anyone. Cried Hamura, as he tried to stop Jane from revealing the truth to the council. I told you before I no longer care what your Siratobi say is forbidden, said Jane angrily as he gave Hamaru a dangerous eye glaze that told him that Jane was a hair's breadth away from killing him along with the Hokage. Why don't you tell them Siratobi? Tell them how when that bastard the Yaoundame abandoned my mother, who was wounded on their mission together. Tell them how he left her alone to go after the Yaoundame Tsuchikage, who we never confirmed was there. Tell them how he left her alone too weak to defend herself when those Iwa bastards found her and raped and murdered her. Tell them how when he was gone off to make a bigger name for himself, my mother's body was mutilated by those bastards and he wasn't there to defend her when she needed him. Tell them how to make sure that he remained the golden boy of Kanoha, you and the elders covered up the fact that he left his post and abandoned my mother, his wounded teammate, in enemy territory. Tell them how you forced me to keep from telling anyone from happening or risk being disgraced to the whole village and labeled a traitor. Tell them the truth Siratobi. Spoke Jane angrily as he growled out Siratobi and tightened his grip of Siratobi throat further, nearly choking him. I I it's t true we nn needed M Minato on the front Linish was our best shinobi and a hero to the village if word got out of what happened. Minato would have been disgraced we could not afford the same thing to happen to Minato as it did to Sukumo. We had no other choice especially since I had already made plans to make Minato the Yandame Hakage if we had charged Minato for what happened. Then moral among the shinobis would have plummeted and Iwa would have taken advantage of it. I had to do it for the good of the Velagiga. Spoke Saratobi before gagging, as Jane tightened his grip even further in anger, as he was now a single squeeze away from choking the Hokage to death. This revelation of course shocked nearly everyone in the council room along with the shinobis outside the barrier. As they could not believe what they were now hearing, at how the Yandame had left his wounded teammate unprotected, which resulted in her death, and how the Sandame and the elders covered it up. Do you use that pathetic for everything, the Yandame abandoned my mother and he wasn't punished for it because it was for the good of the village. You sent me away and kept me from being there for my brother because it was for the good of the village. You allowed my brother an innocent boy to be beaten and abused because it was for the good of this village is that all you can ever say to justify what you have done to my family, spoke Jane angrily. At this Saratobi could say nothing as he was being slowly choked by Jane, but it did not matter to Jane as he was about to make Saratobi pay for his sins against him and his family. 
this may not for the good of the village, but it does not matter for it is time for you to pay for your crimes against Naruto, my mother and me, spoke Shane as he was about to stab Sirotobi in the head with his katana. But just before he could Tsum shouted out Chane don't do it. Tsum right Shane don't do this spoke Hiyashi, as he tried to stop his former student from doing something that would make him a criminal. Stay out of this sensei this has nothing to do with either you or Tsum, spoke Shane, while not even taking his eyes of Sirotobi, as he glared coldly at the old man, while his blade was only a hair's breadth from touching Sirotobi's head. It may not, but you were still once my student and that mean anything that happens to you concerns me, and as your friend I telling you not to do this. This won't change what happened to your brother, all this will do will make you a wanted criminal, and you will be forced to leave the village, and you won't be there to protect him, spoke Hiyashi, hoping to reason with Shane. I will take him with me, he will better off with me than he ever would be here, as I'm his only family as he is mine said Shane. Is that the kind of life you want for him, a life on the run going from one place to the next, always looking over his shoulder and being hunted by countless oinans. As that is what will happen if you do this and the village will not allow Naruto to leave it and go rogue, you will both be hunted down like animals, said Hiyashi. Then let the come and I will kill every single one that comes after us and I have friends that will take us and snarled out Jane. But what about Naruto, he still has some people that he cares about, as there were those that did care for Naruto, my own son is his friend. Can you really just take him away from all of them? How can justify taking him away from what he knows and then explain all this to him, do you think he believe you when he doesn't even know you or trust you? He also doesn't know the truth and if you kill Sirotobi now then all he will know of you will be the person who killed the Hokage, who he still considers like a grandfather, said Tsum. Hoping to reason with Shane as even with the hard life he had in Konoha, Naruto still had some people he cared for here and who cared about him in return. Tsum right Shane, Naruto will not leave with you or even give you a chance if you do this, spoke Hiyashi as he saw Shane starting to hesitate a little. You also owe Sirotobi. At this Shane snapped his head to Hiyashi with a look of unbridled fury. Owe him? Spoke Shane angrily I owe him nothing after everything that he has done to Naruto and me. Yes you do, if it wasn't for Sirotobi, Naruto would have been killed for having the kickbi in him long ago replied Hiyashi. He only did that so that Kanoha would still have a jinch cricky and use him snarled out Jane, as he glared angrily at old Cage. Maybe so, but he also made sure that Naruto was not turned into a motionless weapon like Danzo wanted, and he still allowed Naruto to live, giving him a chance to grow up and be his own person, despite that the villagers did to him. You owe Sirotobi that much so don't kill him as it will solve nothing, and all you will do is have your brother and the rest of the village hate you for it, said Hiyashi. Upon hearing this Shane said or did nothing but look directly into Sirotobi's eyes and glared coldly at the old man. This continued few minutes as no one said or did anything as they did not know what Shane would do next, that was until suddenly Shane let go of Sirotobi and let him fall to the ground where he started gasp for air and Shane sheathed his katana. You should be grateful old man, Tsum and Hiyashi sensei just saved your miserable life, but that does not mean that you will go unpunished for what you did, spoke Shane where he quickly punched Sirotobi in the gut and the quickly pit his finger. He then quickly drew another complex seal on Sirotobi's forehead in his own blood in just under three seconds, before he then placed his two front fingers on the seal. After which he then did a few one-handed hand seals before crying out Kinenisu no Jutsu, memory transfer technique. When he did this Aratobi suddenly start to cry out in pain, as memories of being tortured beaten by people started to flood his mind and he could actually feel the pain of each beating. He also could feel the sorrow and the despair that made him almost wish he was dead. After what felt like an entirety, the memories finally ended and Sirotobi was on his knees sweating and panting heavily. What did you do to him? Cried Kaharu in angry I placed a special seal that I credit, it's called the Kujimfkin, the penance seal, the seal contains the memories I gained from watching my brother's life, and it will make Sirotobi see and feel a different one of those memories. Every morning, noon and night, three times every day for the rest of his life, it is the closest thing I can do to him to make known what he put Naruto through. There also has a fail safe to it, so that if anyone ever tries to tamper with it or remove it, it will destroy Sirotobi's mind, leaving him nothing more than a human vegetable. The only one that can remove it safely is me, as the seal is written in blood my blood, said Jane with a small cold and cruel smirk on his face, as he walked away from Sirotobi and was in front of the council again. The catchy Z-H-A-N-E. You will remove that seal immediately, or you will be charged with attack the Hokujin with treasons, cried Kahara angrily. I will not and you cannot make me, as other than Sirotobi here there's not a shinobi in this village that can even hope to force me, as I have grown much stronger than I was when I was last here, replied Jane. Kaharu and Hamura were of course furious at Jane's refusal, but before they could even respond to Jane's refusal, he spoke. But you will give in to the demands that I'm about to make because if you don't I promise you, Kanoha will burn to the ground. 
you may be strong boy, but not even you are strong enough to take on the full might of Kanoha by yourself and defeat all our shinobis, so do not think you can intimidate us with your ideal threat spoke Danzo. I do not make idle threats Danzo, but you are right as strong as I am I cannot hope to defeat one of the five great shinobi nations by myself. But tell me how many of your shinobis do you think you will lose before you kill me? Also how much of the village do you think will be destroyed in the battle, because I can promise you I will not be killed easily, and I will not die alone, and when you do kill me said Jane. That threat of course worried many as they had no doubt that in such a fight many if not most of their best shinobis would be killed, I can also assure you my allies will come and will finish what I started. And who would these allies of yours be that would be powerful enough to destroy an entire village, spoke Suratobi as he came back to the council table and to his seat added. These should tell you replied Jane as he took off a red jeweled ring on his finger and a pendant that was underneath his shirt that had a symbol on it where he them threw it at Suratobi. When Suratobi caught the ring and pendant and looked at them, he went pale white with fear and looked back at Jane, who just had cold triumphant smirk on his face when he saw the look on Suratobi's face. Why why you see see can't be one of them, I I it's not be possible spoke Suratobi with clear fear in his voice, which got everyone in and out of the council room worried. I can assure you I am, since you know that only a member can wear one of their rings without dying, replied Jane with the same cold triumphant smirk on his face. Suratobi. What is the ring and the symbol on the pendant what are you talking about? Asked Hamura. Suratobi did not answer, but showed Hamura, Danzo and Kaharu the ring and the pendant, where they immediately recognized the ring and the symbol on the pendant three, where like Suratobi all three turned to look to Jane with fear. Okajama, what's going on? What is that ring and that symbol on the pendant? What's wrong? Asked Choza. DT this ring and T this S symbol represent that Jane is a member of the JK Shinobi Shogun, the Ten Shinobi Warlords, spoke Suratobi. At this everyone eyes widen and looked at Jane with fear as they could not believe what they heard, as they all knew about the Ten Shinobi Warlords. As the name suggested it was made up of ten members, each member who had no true loyalties to any nation or shinobi village. The group had existed long before the founding of the Great Shinobi Nations and was even involved in the First Great Shinobi World War and despite being made up of only ten members. They were able to match strength with any of the five Great Shinobi Nations, as each member of the JK Shinobi Shogun was as powerful as a cage. During the First Great Shinobi World War, they inflicted devastating losses of all the shinobi villages both major and minor. Even Kanoha was crippled badly by them, as the Shadame Hokage and the Nidame Hokage both died battling members from the group. Jane's great-grandfather Akechi Ryu also known as Kanoha no Karoryu, Black Dragon of Kanoha, also died in battle against members from it as well. 4. Upon Suratobi could not help remember when he first met a member of the Ten Shinobi Warlords during the First Great Shinobi World. Flashback. Team Tabarama along with its support team, Team Shimura which contained Shimura Danzm, Ichihakugami and Akamichi Terifu, were currently running through the forest as the fled from Kumo's elite Kinkaku force. As they ran they heard several large explosions coming from the distance not too far away behind them. It was then that a young Suratobi Hiruzen came to a stop. Hiruzen. What are you doing? We can't stop, we have to get away, spoke a young Yudatine Kaharu. You guys go I going back to help Sensei, replied Hiruzen. Do you want to die Suratobi? We can't beat the Kinkaku force their Kumo's elite fighting unit, replied a young Shimura Danzm. Danzm right Hiruzen, if we go back there we all be killed and Sensei's sacrifice will have been for nothing. Besides Sensei named you the Sandame and Kanoha needs a Hokage, so you of all people have to return to Kanoha, spoke a young Mitakado Hamura. Then what kind of Hokage would I be if I left my Sensei to fight 20 elite Kumo shinobis by himself and die? How can I ask other shinobis of Kanoha to follow me into battle after I ran away from a fight and left my sensei to die? I don't know about you guys, but I am going back so you can either come with me or you can run back to Kanoha, spoke Suratobi with an air of authority around him. Showing to the others why exactly the Nidame Hokage made Hiruzen his successor. Quickly deciding the two teams turned around and started to head to where the battle between the Nidame Hokage and the Kinkaku force. Soon enough the two teams arrived in the clearing where the battle was going on, when they arrived they saw the Nidame Hokage battling fiercely against the members of the Kinkaku force. As they watched they could see that even despite being outnumbered 20 to 1, the Nidame Hokage was battling heroically against the impossible odds, showing exactly why he was the Hokage of Kanoha. Just when they were about to enter the battle and help the Nidame Hokage, a sudden massive burst of wind erupted and blasted everyone away. Quickly everyone regained themselves where the Kinkaku force were on one side, the Nidame Hokage on the other, and Hiruzen and the others staying back hidden in the trees and one new person in the middle of the two sides. The new person was a handsome young man, he wore a long brown robe with a katana on his left side hip, with brown boots and pants, along with a brown shirt. 
He had black hair with tight and a loose ponytail and long hair strands that fell down his face. He wore a fang earring on his left ear and arm guards on both his hands and wore a ring with a clear gem on his right hand, he also wore a pendant of six serpent-like heads on it. Five. Upon seeing the stranger both the Nidame Hokage and the Kinkaku Force got fell into their different fighting stances, after which one of the members of the Kinkaku Force spoke what everyone was wondering. Who the hell are you? I'm Tatsumaki Arashi of the JK Shinobi Shogun at this everyone eyes widen in surprise, after which the Kinkaku Forces and the Nidame Hokage prepared themselves for battle. So you're the famed Kami no Kei's, God of Wind spoke Nidame Hokage. Ended and you are Senju to Birama the Nidame Hokage, and these are the famed Kinkaku Force of Kumo, it seems I have stubble upon worthy opponents to fight, spoke Arashi as he drew his sword out and prepared to fight. We have to go now, Sensei up against not only the Kinkaku Force, but a shinobi warlord as well, he won't stand chance by himself, said Hiruzen as he took out his kunai and prepared to enter the fight. Sirotobi wait. Don't be a fool if we enter now we be slaughtered, we need to wait, spoke Danzo. There no time sensei needs us said Hiruzen as he was about to up into the clearing, but before he could Arashi began to do a series of one-handed hand seals that it was almost impossible to see any of them. After which he then cried out Ftan ship no Jeru, wind style. Gale of the whirlwind, where a massive dome of wind the surrounded him and expanded outward. Where it blasted everyone away and destroyed everything in the surrounding air. An hour and half later, Hiruzen and the others who had been blasted away from Arashi's wind jutsu and knocked unconscious woke up. They all found themselves underneath broken tree trunks and branches from the wind jutsu and scattered not far from one another. When they woke up and regrouped they went to look for the Nidame Hokage and help him in the battle, they soon found that there were only two chakra signatures left, one belonged to the Nidame Hokage and the other belonging to Arashi. They quickly raced over to where they were fighting, when they got there they saw the Nidame Hokage fighting Arashi with his rage and no ken, sword of the thunder god, while Arashi fought with his own sword covered in wind chakra. Both the Nidame Hokage and Arashi looked worse for wear, as they were badly wounded and covered in bruises, cuts and other wounds, their clothes were covered in blood and torn up, and both were breathing heavily and covered in sweat. Both continued to slash their swords at one another until, when the Nidame Hokage made a slashing move at Arashi, who dodged the slash and the saw opening that he took, where he then ran the Nidame Hokage through with his sword. After the Nidame Hokage started to spit out blood, before he pulled himself away from the sword and then fell dead on the ground, leaving a tired and wounded Arashi, who was panting heavily from exhaustion from the battle standing over the dead Hokage's battle. Upon seeing this, the young Hiruzen flew into a rage and jumped out to face the tired and wounded shinobi warlord, Hiruzen was soon followed by his teammates, along with Danzo and his team. Upon seeing the young group the warlord sighed and then spoke, go home boy, I have no wish to kill you or your friends, as there has been enough death this day, and you're all too young to die just yet, where when he said this. Hiruzen and the others could see the bodies of the dead members of all twenty members the Kinkaku forces, scattered all around the destroyed clearing. Never. Not until you paid for killing my sensei, replied the furious Hiruzen, where he then summoned Enma and had him change into his Kongnyoi, adamantine staff, form and prepared to fight, as did the rest of his comrades prepared for battle. Foolish children do not throw away your lives so foolishly, after your Hokage nobly sacrificed himself to save you all, spoke Arashi, where before Hiruzen and the other could even attack, Arashi's eyes suddenly glowed blue. Hiruzen and the others then suddenly felt an incredible powerful paralyzing force that froze their bodies and kept them from moving at all. It was almost like killing intent yet it was different, as it was stronger and more powerful than normal killing intent. As the paralyzing effects of killing intent only last a few seconds on veteran shinobis like them, but this effect would not simply go away or be overpowered by them. I I see can't move spoke Hamura. Them me either, spoke Akimichi Terefu. None o of us can said Danzo. I wouldn't bother moving you are all under the effects of the second level of my sake, thirst for blood, 6, a, and none of you have the willpower yet to overcome it, spoke Arashi. After which he then did a few hand seals and the cried out cage Kuchius no jutsu, shadow summoning jutsu. Where instead of seeing a puff of smoke and an animal summons Hiruzen and the others saw up to a hundred medium sized shadows appearing on the ground around them, where shinobis began to appear right out of the shadows. But these weren't ordinary shinobis they didn't even look human, they were dressed in black ninja clothing, blue skinned and glowing red eyes, seven, where they surrounded Hiruzen and the others. Allow me in to introduce you to the shadow ninjas, the personal shadow spirit warriors summons of the JK shinobi shogun, spoke Arashi. Upon seeing this Hiruzen and the other knew they were all dead, as even if they could move, it was doubtful that they could defeat all these shadow ninja by themselves, where Arashi could very likely summon more if need be. Do not worry I have no intention to kill you, my mission was only to deal crippling blows to both your village and Kumagakur, and I have done so. There need not be any more bloodshed today. 
your sensei fought bravely and honorable to the very end and willing sacrificed himself to save you all and was the most challenging opponent I have ever fought, he fought like a true warrior, worthy of the name Hokage. Out of respect for him, I shall spare your lives and allow you to take his body back for burial in your village, with full honors as he deserves, spoke Arashi, where he started to walk away from the still paralyzed group. But before he left he turned around slightly to look at them and spoke again, but if any of you should ever come and face me on the battlefield again, I will not show you the same courtesy again. The same can be said should you ever meet any of my fellow warlords on the battlefield as well, after which a massive burst of killing intent hit Hiruzen and the others and made them feel as if Arashi had rammed his hand into their chests and pulled out the hearts. When the killing intent ended Hiruzen and the other fell to the ground, panting heavily and shaking madly from the fear and the vision that they saw and felt. You have been warned, spoke Arashi where he turned around and started to walk away and then disappeared in a whirl of wind, as soon as he disappeared, the shadow ninja sank back into the shadows from whence the came without a trace. Leaving a shaken Hiruzen and his friends in the ruin clearly where they would soon take their Hokage's body and his sword back to Kanoha, where he would be buried with full honors. And flashback. Even to this very day that feeling of the helplessness and terrifying fear could be clearly felt by Suratobi and the other's elders when they remembered that day. Jane then quickly called the ring and the pendant back, thanks to one of the seals on them, where they were reversed summoned back to his hand, where he then put them back on him, after which he spoke again. Now you know that I have made no idle threat, for even if you do kill me, you all know what will happen to this village if you kill me, for if you do the other shinobi warlords will come down on this village and destroy it, leaving no trace that it ever existed. For as strong as Konoha is, it alone cannot hope to survive a battle against all ten members of the shinobi warlords, stated Jane. At this no one in the council spoke or argue as they all knew that what Jane spoke was true, as not even their village could hope to stand against the combined efforts of ten cage-level shinobis at once, along with their shadow spirit warriors summons of the shinobi warlords. As it was said that they could summon an entire army of them, that was large enough to easily overwhelm any one of the five great shinobi nations. But even despite everything that you have done to me and my brother, I will not have this village destroyed despite how much pleasure it would give me. For there are still some good people here that do not deserve to pay for your mistakes and who tried to help my brother, people like Tsum San and the Inuzuka clan, as well as Aburam clan and other like them said Jane. Hence why I will not take my brother from here, as I know he still has friends here, but I will if this village ever tries to harm him again or he wishes to leave so himself, stated Jane. This of course caused angry cries come from several council members, saying that they would not allow it, but Jane ignored them and continued on with what he was saying. If my brother wishes to stay I will take on the clan privileges and rights that had been offered to my family when my great-grandfather Akechi Ryu first came to this village but never took. I will then place him as an honorary member of my clan where he will be protected and treated like any member of my clan where any attack on him will be treated as a direct attack on me, stated Jane forcefully. At this the many on the council did not know how to feel, as for years they had been trying to get Jane family to become an official clan of Kanoha, so that they could give them Clan Restoration Act, where they could fully build the Akechi clan into Kanoha. But if Naruto became an honorary member of the clan, then Jane could use whatever force he wished to defend Naruto should anyone attack him, due to the right that all clans have when someone attacks a member of their clan. This of course Iritobi could not allow to happen as he knew the amount of bloodshed this would cause in the village, not to mention the inner turmoil as well. But he still could not refuse Jane Wright to take the clan status if he wished to have it, as the offer was made by the Shadame Hokage himself and was left indefinitely to them. So if they wished to take it they could as they had a bloodline and had special clan techniques to offer the village. Although we accept your petition for clan status, I cannot allow you to have Naruto become an honorary member of you clan due to the volatile nature you have for the village, as well as because several years ago I declared that no clan could adopt Naruto as it would shift the balance of power unfavorably within the village spoke Sachitobi. The elder of course murked at this, believing that they had won up Jane. But Jane remained expressionless, so you what to fight with law Saratobi that fine by me, he thought as Jane had been well versed in the laws of Konoha. As his mother had believed that he should be prepared to fight on all types of battlefields, such as the political battlefield. Which involved fighting with words and cunning instead of with fist and weapons you would fight. That law you made can be superseded by the right of blood relation, as stated in the Kanoha Charter for Shinobi clans, set down by the Shadame Hokage. That states that any person who of direct blood relation to a member of a clan, but not part of said clan or any other clan, can be adopted into the clan if the clan head allows it and the person in question wishes to be part of it. Also you cannot deny me the right to have my brother as part of my clan, unless I have attack or beat my brother, which I have not done, or if I have committed treason to the village stated Jane. 
You attacked a Hokage and placed a seal on him, that's grounds for treason, countered Hamura. Perhaps, but since I'm a clan head now, I have the right to a public trial in the village, where everything that I have learned about my brother's life. The seal Siratobi placed illegally on my brother and everything else that I have mentioned such as letting Orochimaru go and your parts in the cover-up of the Yondame would become a matter of public record. Imagine the scandal that would erupt in the village if they learned all this, the shinobis and the villagers would never trust or follow any of you again. They would then most likely demand your removal or better yet it could divide the village and very likely start a civil war, replied Jane with small cunning smirk. At this the elder and Siratobi grew concerned as what Jane said was true, where they could not afford to have everything that was just revealed here to be known to the whole village, as it would divide it. The elders also knew that they could not simply have Jane killed, as they did not know how strong Jane really was now, and any force they could send would be most likely killed by him. Thereby they would have earned not only his wrath, but the wrath of the other shinobi warlords for attacking one of their members, as it was a no fact that if you attack one member of the shinobi warlords, it was seen as an attack on them all. At this Saratobi sighed in defeat knowing he could not prevent it and agreed to let Jane adopt Naruto as a member of his clan, should he wish to. This of course caused the elders O frown in anger, while Tsum just smirked at seeing Jane winding up one on Saratobi and the elders in a battle of wits, ha serve you bastards right, she thought. Next I want my apprentices, Saya, Ketsu made into official genins of Konoha, spoke Jane. You have apprentices, said the Saratobi in surprise, to which Jane only nodded. You can't expect youths to accept foreign children into our village, even if they are your apprentices, spoke Kaharu. You can as they have official citizenship as citizens of Hai no Kuni, Fire Country, thanks to the Fire Daimyo granting it to them and have shinobi training from me. They also both have bloodlines, said Jane. As he mentioned that they had bloodline on purpose as he knew how Kanoha valued bloodlines, where they would readily accept people with bloodlines if they wanted to become members of Kanoha. And just as Jane expected, the council became very interested when they heard that Jane's students had bloodlines. And what perchance are their bloodlines? Asked Danzo with interest. My student Saya is an orphan and the sole survivor of the Hirameki clan, the only bloodline holding clan of Hinagakur no Sado, the village hidden in the flowers, which as you all know was destroyed by Karigakur, the hidden mist, during the Third Great Shinobi World War. She also holds her clan's bloodline the Hekaten, Light Release, my other student is Hisagi Ketsu of the Hisagi clan, who many of you are aware, wields the Heimten, Ice Release. His clan was killed in the bloodline purge in Kurigakur, making him like Saya the last known wielder of his clan bloodline, explained Jane. As expected the council and Saratobi decided to allow Saya and Ketsu become genin, in the hope of them settling into Kanoha and restoring their clans in Kanoha, strengthening it with their bloodlines, not to mention if Jane trained the, they would have two very powerful shinobi in their village. This was what Jane wanted them to think as, he knew that for his plan to work, he had to reveal his students' bloodlines and get them become official genins of Kanoha. I also want my brother on my team, spoke Jane. That is impossible Jane there are laws that forbid that to prevent family members from being the senseis of their children or other close family members, so to prevent favoritism and unfair special treatment. Also the genin teams have already been set up, replied Siratobi, as he hoped he could still have some kind of control over Naruto. There are exceptions to those laws, laws that the Nidame Hokage placed when it came to the training of students. As started in the training act in the concerning of genin teams and sensei in paragraph 12, line 7. It states that in the event of biased teaching, whether it is in the academy or be the sensei of the team, and if it can be proven. Then the family members or clan members can have the student in question transferred to a team of a clan or family member, so to ensure that the student has competent training and be trained to his or her full potential, stated Shane. I can prove that Inaruto training in the academy has been tampered with, whether it be interrogating your recent trader Mizuki or by having Inoichi sensei look at the memories have recovered from Naruto. At this the Saratobi knew he had no choice, the law was on Shane's side, and he was correct, as he was aware of the biased training Naruto got from most of the Chunin teacher in the academy. That was why he had Kakashi assigned as Naruto-sensei, so that Kakashi could give Naruto better training and make him a better shinobi. He also knew that even if he refused, the clan's heads would turn against him, as Shane was well in his rights. Ooh. Very well Shane I will make the arrangements and side Saratobi before he was interrupted by Shane. I want it in writing now said Jane forcefully, as I will go to the academy tomorrow and pick him up there myself. Saratobi only signed again and quickly wrote down a message stating that Jane would be Naruto new sensei. After Jane took the note from Saratobi he then spoke again, I also want all of control of the Namaka's home, along with all the belongings of Kashina, be handed over to me. Jane I can't do that. You have no calm to either as you renounced all calm to your fat I mean Minato, and all of Kashina things are the family home and are part of if. 
the only person that can calm them is Naruto, and he cannot do so until his 21st birthday, spoke Sirotobi. I claiming them for Naruto, as he has a right to know who his mother was, and even his father despite the fact that he was the one who cursed him and left him to wolves like you. I was named his guardian in their will, as you are well aware, so that in event that something should happen to them, and that self-serving Toad Jiraiya was unable to live up to his duties and care for Naruto, I could. Thereby according to legal laws of Konoha, I can take full control of the Namika's home and everything in it, and give Naruto full access and control over it, if he so does wishes to said Jane. Once again using Kana laws against Siratobi and the elders as they had no choice but agree to Jane demand as he was well in his rights. The Ashi slightly applauded Jane use of law, as most people in his position would have simple demanded and threatened the Hokage, making the situation worse. But even after losing his composure for a few minutes, Jane regained himself and fought with a calm cool head and used Konoha own laws against the Hokage and the elders. I also want full composition delivered to Naruto for the abuse of trauma and suffering that he went through here, considering everything that he went through this village should pay 1 million Ryo for every attack that was made on him. That 640 million Ryo for those of you who don't know, spoke Jane neutrally. When the elder and the civilian heard they were about to go ballistic and scream and shout how they would not pay a cent and how Jane was going too far this time. But before they could, Jane spoke up again, be thankful that is all I demanding and it not the heads of those responsible. As even though I will not have this village destroyed, that does not mean I will not make this village play dearly for what it has done for my brother. This of course caused much anger and outrage among the elders and the civilians council members. After all you have just done, you may call these demands off us boy. You may be a member of the JK Shinobi Shogun, but that does not mean that you can make demands off uses, we will not bow down to you and simply give in to your demands, stated Danzo. I though you would say something like that, which is why I had a backup plan made, spoke Shane, but before anyone could ask what he meant. A sudden a puff was heard and a small ruby red dragon appeared next to Jane and spoke. Master Jane, I have the reply from the fire daimyo, which you asked for spoke the young ruby red dragon. Perfect timing Rob plus, thank you spoke Shane kindly and even gave the small dragon a small smile as he took the scroll from the young dragon where the dragon nodded and puffed away. The council members along with the shinobi members were of course shocked beyond words when they saw the small young dragon. As the dragon summoning contract was said to be the strongest summoning contract in the world and was also once the special summoning creatures of the Akechi clan. The contact itself was thought to have been lost roughly over 30 years ago when Jane's grandfather Akechi Kenshin. Also known as Kanahano Shai D plus R, Kanoha's death dealer, was killed by Hanzo the salamander when he fought him. They were also equally surprised when they heard that Jane had sent a message to the fire daimyo and he had replied to him, where they all began to wonder what was going on now. Before any of them could ask what the message about, Jane opened it up and began to read it to them. The letter stated how furious the fire daimyo was with Kanoha at how they have treated the son of the Yandame Hokage and the brother of Jane. It also told how the fire daimyo was now cutting three quarters of their budget from him. It also stated that they were to make full reprimands to Jane and his brother, where a copy of the reprimands would be sent the fire daimyo to see if they were satisfactory with him, and if they should not make reprimands, then he would cut all funding from Kanoha and send all his business elsewhere. He also stated that upon learning of the Hokage purposely neglecting Naruto and allowing the abuse without punishing those responsible. He was giving Jane full immunity from being charged for punishing those responsible of his brother's abuse. But he did forbid Jane from killing any of them, he also forbid Jane from horrendously mutilating those responsible as well. When the council heard this many refused to believe that the fire daimyo would allow such a thing, but Jane quickly showed the fire daimyo personal seal on the letter proving it was from him. The elders tried to argue that the fire daimyo had no control over things that happen in Kanoha and that they were none of his concern. But Jane countered stating that Naruto was still a citizen of Hai no Kuni, therefore he had every right, he also mentioned if a clan asked for aid from him, fire daimyo, over a dispute in the village. The daimyo can mediate if he wishes to, and since Naruto was now an honorary member of Jane clan, Jane could ask for him to settle the matter. Tsuritobi began to feel more worn than he felt years as things just seemed to get worse by the minute, since with the fire daimyo's backing, Jane would lash out of the village, where there was no telling what he would do to those responsible for Naruto's abuse. He knew he should have expected it, as a few years after Jane left Kanoha news had reached him that the fire daimyo and his family had been attacked from an unknown force, but were saved by Jane. Soon after he heard that Jane discovered that some lesser lords had been behind the attack and were planning a coup d'etat where he then helped the fire daimyo end it before it could begin. Saratobi even heard that Jane was close friends with the fire daimyo young grandson as he had been his personal kinjutsu trainer for a few years. Hence he had developed a close friendship with the fire daimyo and the fire daimyo grandson and heir to the throne. 
It got even worse as more dragon summons arrived letters arrived from several different lords, daimyos and different influential people from several different nations, and importing businessmen, sending word declaring their support for Jane. As well as stating that if Kanoha would not agree to Jane demands they would cancel all the missions they would take them elsewhere, instead of taking away half of them, which was what they were doing now. Several nations even stated that they would cease trade with Kanoha from now on. Altogether this would put Kano on very hard times, in terms of money, and it would be worse if they didn't give in to Jane demands for compensation. Eventually though Saratobi and the elders caved in and agreed to pay the composition and put it into the Namika's account, much to the civilian members' outrage and horror. As with the loss of this amount of money from the Kanoha's treasury, it would put Kanoha in a very tenuous position in finical terms. Is that all your demands? Growled Himura as he and the other elders glared at Jane. There is one other demand I will make, spoke Shane with barely seen cold smirk. Which is? Growled Kaharu. You will make Naruto's heritage know to the people, and I want the same traveling privileges I have to be give to Naruto, and my students spoke Shane. But what about Iwa, they could come aft spoke the Sandam, but before they could finish, he was interrupted by Shane. I will deal with Iwa very well then signed the old cage tiredly, I will have it announced next week, spoke Suratobi, but was interrupted yet again by Shane. You do it tomorrow night and you will give to sign permission slips tomorrow, no excuses said Jane forcefully, where Suratobi quickly agreed as he was too tired to argue with Jane. Although when Jane would no doubt leave with Naruto and his students, he planned to have Jane watch and followed by his Anbu, ones he could trust. After hearing this Jane was about to turn and walk away from the council, but he quickly turned around again. Oh, and if something should ever happen to either myself or my brother or my students, like say an accident happened or we were somehow killed or disappear. Then these files along with many others will be released to the entire elemental continent, spoke Shane as he took out several files from his trench coat and threw them to Suratobi. When Suratobi grabbed the files and opened the files, his eyes wide slightly in surprise, these are file from the Anbu Achieves how did you get them? You forget Suratobi I was once an Anbu and I know my way around the place, and like the old saying once an Anbu always an Anbu, and Cage Bunshin, Shadow Clone, and Copy Judases are very useful when gathering intel from places like the Anbu Achieves, stated Shane. So you're blackmailing us? Cried Kaharu angrily you call it blackmail I call it insurance, since if you try anything against my brother, my students, me or anyone I care about. I will have my friends release that information along with everything I known about Kanoha to every nation on this continent, and there are many things that are in the files I have gathered to utterly ruin Kano reputation. Where you will be lucky to be hired to do an E-rank mission by the time it is released. Not to mention the other shinobi nations will attack you once they learn all the weaknesses in your defensives and the locations of all your hidden bases in Hai no Kuni, Fire Country, and Covert Operatives, after my friends release the information, said Jane. This is treason, Jane. Cried Hamura. Treason is a matter of perspective, as I see this as protecting my brother and those that I care about, so I suggest that you remember that if anything should happen to Himi will burn Kanoha to the ground, spoke Jane giving the Hokage in the council one cold and angry galler. Whereas he spoke the last party then flooded the room with a massive burst of killing intent that was felt by everyone in and around the room, which terrified most people at how strong it was. After which Shane then brought down the barrier with a single hand sign, whereas they did the kunais he had used to make the barrier seem to rust and then fall to the ground in pieces. Meaning that there was some kind of fail safe on the kunai to prevent them from being examined by people. When Shane headed toward to shinobis that were outside the barrier, they quickly moved out of his way and made a path from him to walk through, as none of them wanted to mess with him. But just as he was about to walking out Shane turned his head slightly to look back at Hiashi at Inoichi, oh Hiashi sensei, Inoichi sensei, I suggest that you tell your clan members not get in my way when I come visiting certain members of your clan. As I cannot be held responsible for what happens to them if they get involved in it. After which Shane then continued to walk out of the room, leaving both Hiashi and Inoichi, wondering what members of their clans did to Naruto to earn Shane wrath. As Jane walked away Hamura turned to Suratobi, Hokage Sam you can't actually be letting him get away with all he just done, especially what he did to you. What would you like me to do Hamura? Jane knows more about our security faculties than anyone else, thanks to his time in Anbu, so he knows their strength and weakness, and that's if we can capture him. As Jane is a member of the JK Shinobi Shogun, meaning his strength and power must have grow exponentially from when he left here. Also if we did capture Shane then the other shinobi warlords will come and free him and destroy the village in the process. Not to mention as well Shane knows many of the village's secrets from his time in Anbu and from what he no doubt knows from raiding the Anbu Achieves, but even then there no way to know exactly how much he really does know. 
so if we try and stop him he will release the information along with everything he mentioned here, which will divide the village and could even start a civil war here, and the other villages will attack us when they learn all the information that Shane allies would release to them. Not to mention as well what the daimyo will do as he furious enough with us right now, spoke Siratobi. After this the council all knew Jane had them, and there wasn't a thing they could do about it, or at least for now. As Siratobi thought the situation over in his mind, he could not help but be reminded of when was young, where he became slightly full of himself over how strong he was. Where he then challenged Jane grandfather Akechi Kenshin to a fight, and even angered him by call him a coward when he refused to fight him when he first challenged Kenshin. Soon after though Siratobi was beaten nearly half to death by him, after which his sensei the Nidame Hokage told him that he had just learned the hard why when he angered Kenshin. El hath no wrath like a vengeful Akechi. After remembering the Siratobi knew that his sensei was a far wiser man than he ever was, and he could only wonder now what else Jane had in store for him and the rest of Konoha. What if Naruto Daimyo Heritage revealed council bashing, and thanks for watching my video till the end if you enjoy this content, then do consider subscribing to my channel, and leave a like if you guys need the next part, comment down, and thanks for watching the video and see you guys in the next video.